Well, the players are out on the pitch and you can hear that the Liverpool fans are singing as well. I will point out to uh, the Liverpool fan who was on the breakfast show this morning that just before kick-off I can see some empty seats in the Anfield Roads end. I'm pretty sure that five, ten minutes after kick-off those seats, as they were at the Etihad last night, will be filled up. You listen to the kick-off on TalkSport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Enterprise has 450 branches with all the vehicles your business needs. Carabao Cup final. Chelsea Liverpool's live on TalkSport on Sunday. Join us for all the build-up from Wembley at 1.30. It's a three o'clock kick-off. We will have a host of top guests in the build-up to that game. The warm-up from 11 a.m. Sunday comes live from Wembley Box Park with Liverpool fan Andy Oladipo and Chelsea fan Rory Jennings. TalkSport 2 right now for more build-up to commentary of Porto against Arsenal in the Champions League. It kicks off at 8. But on TalkSport right now, it's commentary of Liverpool against Luton Town, a game affecting both ends of the Premier League table. It's not on your telly, but it is live, exclusive and free on TalkSport. Here's your commentary team of former Premier League striker Dean Ashton alongside Sam Matface. Thank you, Adrian. Good evening, everyone. The celeb hunters are on the lookout again tonight. After all, if Harry Styles can turn up at Kenilworth Road, imagine who will turn up at Anfield. All eyes were in one direction an hour ago when the team sheet was released. In the column mark, Liverpool, where was the big front man and his iconic super support act? The answer, not there. It's a sign of the times that Liverpool without 11 first-teamers tonight, including Nunez and Salah. And whilst Liverpool's walking wounded can't stop falling, Luton are primed to take advantage. But there is one fact they can't escape, and that is the Hatters have never won here. They took on Manchester United on Sunday and took them to task. They drew with Liverpool at Kenilworth Road, and they also flung at City. And we know that nothing is certain in the Premier League. And that's what makes it beautiful. Here are the teams. Liverpool's injury list is getting longer and longer. And tonight there were about 11 first teamers, including Darwin, Nunez, Mo Salah and Diogo Jota. Five changes from Saturday. Luton unchanged from the weekend. Still missing their top scorer, Elijah Adibayo. Our referee tonight, Andy Madley, the VAR, Simon Hooper. It's white shirts, black shorts, white socks for Luton Town attacking the goal away to our right-hand side. And it's all red for Liverpool attacking the Anfield Road end in the first 45. Also tonight, Champions League action with Arsenal Porto on Talk Sport 2. And Jamie and Jason are back on the sports bar from 10 for all that late-night talking. It is Luton's first visit to Anfield since 1992. Back then, TalkSport's Graham Souness was the Reds' manager and Dean Saunders, who was hosting TalkSport breakfast this morning, scored the winning goal in a 2-1 victory. Luton have never won here, Dean Ashton. How do they do it tonight? Well, look, it's, it's a bit of a cross-off between these two. First and second in terms of accurate crosses per match and Luton just about pip Liverpool I think that's what it's going to be about it's going to be about those quick deliveries into the box and hopefully three players at the very least in Woodrow Chong and Morris getting into the box well Luton were passive and sloppy in the opening few minutes against Manchester United once they got into the game they troubled the Red Devils they can't afford a casual start here Endo has it on the edge of the centre circle Lollops it forward and Diaz is now on the chase down the left hand side it's picked up and sent towards the edge of the penalty area across comes the slender figure of Tedan Mengi puts it against Diaz he thought it was going to go out for a goal kick and actually went out for a corner away to our left the first of the game but well, what they can't do, Luton, is switch off thinking, well, they're the bigger team and we can deal with set plays because Liverpool are excellent, especially Virgil van Dijk. Quick one in from Elliot into Gravenberg and then on from McAllister. Towards the far post, a little flick behind and away by Doughty and it's out for another corner on the other side. It's a quick start from Liverpool who know that if they win tonight, they'll be top no matter what happens this weekend whilst they're on cup final duty. Any slip will open the door to City or Arsenal to take advantage. Another delivery to come in from the far side. Van Dijk up from the back, so is Quanser. Uh, right on the edge of the area, Connor Bradley is lurking. Gakpo being marshalled by a combination of Bell, Osho, 
and Mengi the ball goes towards the penalty spot it's over their heads away by Bell and then there was a bit of holding going on inside the penalty area the referee Andy Madley said nothing about it Gomez playing at left back tonight into Elliot back to Gomez on halfway rushed by Corley Woodrow but Elliot brings the ball forward through the middle of the pitch and sends it out towards the right hand side it's collected by Gravenberg and sent back to Wataro Endo who captained Japan at the Asia Cup and sent on to Joe Gomez he's back in the team tonight the expense of Andy Robertson and Diaz then gets tripped by Amari Bell who came out of his slot to make a challenge and it's going to be a free kick to Liverpool on halfway nil nil I think Harvey Elliott is uh, another important night for him I think he's been excellent actually when he's played he's not been given as many minutes as I thought he would be this season but when he comes in I want a ball Keller has sent the ball over the top and Diaz is on the chase he's in behind the defence and he's lost the ball underneath his feet and he's got it caught so he's lost it Gravenberg tries to take over and across comes Mengi to put it out on this near side a brilliant ball by Kelleher right over the top of the high Luton defence Diaz thought he was in got a little bit excited and got the ball caught under his feet oh well as, as good as that ball was from Kelleher the slowness and the poor touch from Diaz was absolutely awful. I mean, what an opportunity. Get that out of your feet and just go for goal. Why was he trying to take two or three to out of your feet and shoot? Well, maybe a little bit of frustration for Jurgen Klopp there because Diaz has been pretty reliable this season in front of goal. Ten scored in the last two home games, Luis Diaz. And there is a bit of pressure on his shoulders tonight in the absence of... Darwin Nunez and Mo Salah and Diogo Jota to be the man to come up with the solutions for Liverpool. Gomez down by the corner flag trying to defend as Olfeni puts him under real pressure. The ball goes back into the centre and it's a goal kick because the ball went out of play and it is with Liverpool again deep in front of the uh, cop stand and again another long clearance by Kelleher they've obviously worked on this tactic up to Diaz the knockdown came from Elliot and Gakpo's in the centre but it's aimed towards Diaz who's brought it down this time he's not got it caught he's shot from the far corner and missed the target two big chances in four minutes for Luis Diaz Liverpool should be in front but it's nil-nil oh well this time he did get out of his feet it's a magnificent little dink pass from Elliot over to Diaz who got himself free on the right hand side he takes a brilliant first touch lovely little jink inside onto his left hand side and he just gets it wrong it's as simple as that he can see it all the way to that far corner he just gets his angles wrong well it was about a yard wide in the end from uh, Luis Diaz and he'll be disappointed that he didn't hit the target so were Jurgen Klopp Liverpool nil Luton Town nil four and a half minutes gone on Talk Sport tonight and uh, Luis Diaz who has had a, a remarkable year really with the situation with his dad four goals in his last eight starts and we'll be hoping to extend that record tonight pressure being put on uh, Sammy Laconga in the middle of the park and that's going to be a free kick you were about to tell us the story about Harvey Elliott and your thoughts on him prior to that first initial chance for Luis Diaz well just every time I see him again he's starting to mature as a, as a player he looks now like he feels like he should be in a Liverpool shirt and should be starting games. Probably disappointed he hasn't started more. Tahith Jong down the left, does brilliantly to bound his way past uh, Quan, so gets to the edge of the penalty area, produces a cross which is dealt with by Van Dijk and it's out on the far side and away for a Luton Town throw. Harvey Elliott was the subject of a bit of discussion ahead of the Brentford game from Jurgen Klopp, and w w which he said he, he hasn't really been as good as he was when he first broke into the team before the injury and therefore they haven't been able to give him the sort of minutes that they were giving him beforehand where he was almost the first name on the team sheet yeah I thought that I thought that was quite harsh actually I, I, whether that is to try and really push you know Elliot into a better performance and just give him a little nudge but I think he's been excellent when he's come on good football by Luton held up well by Morris who sends it wide to Ogbeni who tries to get into the penalty area and he jinks away from two players then produces a cross deep to the far post Woodrow trying to keep it alive does but he doesn't reach a white shirt as he hooks it back from the byline and it's collected by Gakpo who's being harassed by Osho maybe too much so and that's a free kick on the edge of the Liverpool penalty area away to our right the rain coming in over the top of the cop stand away to our right hand side the cop grandstand by the way which when it was built was so big it sort of dwarfed everything else inside Anfield and now it's the smallest one of the lot <laughs> and you look the way to your left hand side and you look at the Anfield road end and you think oh hold on a second that's now absolutely huge the one that we're in the main stand is uh, 
almost touching the, the sky. Uh, Luton kicking the ball away. Van Dyke not happy about it. Morris was guilty. I don't want him to get booked. He's in my fantasy team. <laughs> exactly, yeah. As I well know, Sam, size isn't everything. <laughs> and I don't want any further details. Here is uh, Gravenberg on this near touchline. Um, yeah, I suppose it's your vantage point, isn't it, that matters? It, it's the history, of course, of the cop and what that brings. Uh, it's obviously a feature about Liverpool's players. Gakpo's going to come short. Osho's then going to go in tight and Mengi's going to go in tight and Diaz is going to go over the top with Elliot coming short. Here's that long ball by Kelleher again, taken down by Luis Diaz, looking to wriggle away from two white jerseys and they're really tight to him. Mengi giving away a free kick and, and it's going to be a Liverpool ball about, well, 15 yards back from the edge of the penalty area on the right-hand side. He's made a great start, Luis Diaz. I know he hasn't finished those opportunities and he, he should have ball into the box looking for Gakpo and he rises but it's just narrowly over the top of his head and goes out towards this near side Saturday's 4-1 win over Brentford was the first of a possible 26 games for Liverpool in 99 days as they win a corner on this near side because of the industrious work from Gravenberg it is an aching and creaking squad who are still chasing every piece of silverware that was available to them when the season started I think it's put one or two of them in the red zone which is why we have no Salah or Nunez tonight I can't afford to play them in every one of those games dreaded red zone I used to hate it I, yeah. co I couldn't get to the red zone <laughs> Elliot bends the ball back towards the penalty spot it drops on the edge of the area it's touched to the left by McAllister Elliot bends his run to stay on side gets into the area now dollops across up towards the back post it's headed away by Osho and on the edge of the area one back by Luis Diaz problems for Luton Town because Liverpool putting the pressure on nine minutes gone nil nil cross into the box Gakpo with a head another deflection another corner I mean Liverpool don't mess around when that ball is wide they look into the box and it's a quick corner and they've been misshapen here Luton Town and Elliot's got it straight to Diaz who's made this shooting angle it's come out to the edge of the box and McAllister's got a chance to twist inside lift it over the top Diaz keeps it alive heads it back to the left side of the box and then an overhead kick from Gakpo after the cross from Elliot is caught by Thomas Kaminsky and it's been a series of Liverpool chances in the opening 10 minutes but it's goalless but they ask big questions of the defence to try and unsettle them constant balls into the box and not just hopeful you know teased in there from Elliot in towards Gakpo I love the improvisation that he just tried to just fall gently backwards and use the pace as Barkley Ross Barkley almost running into trouble inside his own penalty area and then having to kick the ball clear under pressure and then he wins it back and he sets them on the attack and on Benny has scooped the ball over the feet of uh, Joe Gomez and powered away into a right wing position he needs some support he didn't quite get it so he had to just trot back hold on to the ball it goes to Barkley again, and then there's some space for Chong. Chong out to Doughty, left-hand side, a low ball through the six-yard box, which goes scooting past everybody. And actually, he would have been better served going for a shot there from that angle. In the end, his delivery into the area was neither a cross because the two strikers were a little bit behind the play, and it wasn't a shot either because it was nowhere near Keller's goal. No, it's terrific position from Chong just to get on the half turn and play it to Doughty. And you're right, I think he should shoot here because he should get his head up and see that his centre-forward, Carlton Morris, hasn't made a move at all. It's actually a great ball for a centre-forward that's diving in at the back post, which Carlton Morris doesn't do. He idly wanders into the penalty area, not thinking that there might be that ball on for Doughty. Luton Town, the visitors to Anfield tonight on a cold and uh, rather uh, wet evening on Merseyside Chong with a lovely ball down the left and they're exposed here Liverpool because Doughty's coming forward taking on Quanza Quanza's tackle was brilliant well timed patient and he just prodded the ball away from the on-rushing Doughty and it goes back to his goalkeeper you're listening to Liverpool nil, Luton nil on TalkSport with now and don't forget with now you can stream all the Sky Sports action contract free with a now membership search now sports well, I wonder where he's learned that from, Quanza, in terms of that 1v1 defending. He just looks to his left 10 yards and sees Virgil van Dijk, who's arguably the best in those situations. And he was so calm in not committing himself there against Doughty. I mentioned about those games. It could be that they end up having to play 63 games this season, Jurgen Klopp's team, just like they did in 21-22. 
And you sort of rather casually talked about the red zone. We'll come back to that in just a second because Luton are trying to fashion an attack and Chong has got away on this left-hand side. He's sent the ball towards the far post. He's come up the goalkeeper on Benny. He's there and he's headed it in. In front of the cop and Luton Town lead. A brilliant run by Chong and Doughty down that left-hand side. A superb combination. And when the ball came back into the area, the effort from the wide left-hand side counted off the goalkeeper, felt kindly for Ogbeni, who was coming in at the far post, and he headed it in. And Luton down lead away by a goal to nil. And Liverpool, the league leaders, are behind to a team in the relegation zone. Well, it's Taya Chong again. He's just drifting into positions that make him difficult to mark. He just gets away from Endo drives towards the byline and because of the slick surface he does the right thing he really fires it in low at Kelleher to see if he could handle it which he couldn't it just skims off the bottom of Kelleher's foot up in the air and then you need to overload the back post which they do two against one at the back oh Benny was there free just to nod home Gomez didn't know whether to go to Morris or to Ogbeni he picked the wrong one and it's 1-0 13 minutes played Chizozzi Ogbeni gets his fourth goal of the season. Tahith Chong into Doughty. Back to Tahith Chong, who makes an inside run. He goes to the byline. He shoots across goal with pace, which comes off the gloves of Kelleher. Spirals into the air and out. Foxes the defence. And at the back post, Ogbeni is there to nod it into an empty net in front of the cop to give Luton Town the lead against Liverpool. Well, I think... It- it's about Doughty should have done exactly what Chong did just minutes before in terms of flashing that because of the rain that we've had because of how slick the surface will be test the goalkeeper by flashing that in towards his feet and that's exactly what Chong does and then you have to cover the penalty area and they did that that time Luton with two of them at the back post well they were always tr- likely to trouble Liverpool's defence with those constant bombardments of crosses into the box from Doughty uh, this time it was Tahith Chong who took that on here's Gakpo getting away from Lekonga getting to the edge of the area and shooting and it took a little bit of a deflection off the back of one of the Luton Town players and it goes out for yet another corner here at Anfield tonight and there's been quite a few up until this point this corner in number 5 for Liverpool and we've only played 15 minutes and it's Luton who lead yeah, it's just about calmness for Luton making sure you're doing your jobs don't switch off because you've scored a goal and you start to relax here's the corner on the far side to be taken by Harvey Elliott he swings it in towards the near post missed by Diaz it goes beyond a Gakpo and then out towards the near touchline and Kwanza back in by Connor Bradley who chips it to the far post taken down by Elliott who's inside the area but only just on that right hand side travels backwards to McAllister and then just left of the D Connor Bradley picks it up again tries to come in on his right foot but lays it square to McAllister it's a tightly packed penalty area with lots of white shirts behind the ball but Liverpool trying to find their way feel their way forward they play it wide and spread the play to Luis Diaz on the left he tries to take on Doughty, scoots back on his right foot, then goes on the left and then plays it towards Bradley, whose low cross wasn't well hit. And it comes back to Diaz, who slams it into Corley Woodrow. And it's recycled once again. Bradley right-footed into the box this time towards Diaz, who chests it down back to go on the edge of the six-yard box. Clumsy challenge by Bell. Referee says play on. It's Van Dijk at the far post, getting on the end of an Elliott cross, bringing it down. It's all hands to the pump for Luton here. As they look for a quick equaliser, Liverpool. Back it goes to Endo, who's just short of the centre circle. They work it wide to Elliott in those white boots and his long sleeve shirt untucked to the waist, Harvey Elliott. He guides it back to halfway. It's picked up by Endo, and then it goes into the feet of Gravenberg, who elegantly turns away from Chong, slides it down the right side of the penalty area, but only finds Osho, who clears out to Chong on the far side. Gravenberg then commits a foul. It's a free kick to Liverpool inside their own territory, and they're behind by Golton Hill. Yeah, they defended their box very well there, Luton. Every single player was in the penalty area at one point. What that does, though, it does leave Liverpool players on the edge of the box to be able to get a shot away if you're not absolutely spot on defensively given away by Luton rather cheaply and it's uh, collected here by Gakpo who runs down the inside right channel only to be robbed by Doughty and it goes out of play and I'm out for a corner over on the far side well things have moved on quickly for Luton over the last decade 
And Jurgen Klopp called it a fairy tale in his programme notes. But on this day, a decade ago, they were preparing for a trip to Nuneaton Borough in the National League. And they won 5 0. Andre Gray, remember him? Scored that day. Ball into the penalty area from the corner, headed away. Drops on the edge of the box and then sent forward by McAllister. And eventually it's cleared by Amari Bell up into the evening sky. And Gomez trying to keep it alive, but Chong is going to push it out to the far left instead. And then Doughty's just going to hit and hope through the middle of the pitch. And Bradley will see that back to his goalkeeper. Peli Ruddock and Panzi was in midfield that day. They beat Nuneaton Borough 5 0. And three days after that, they smashed Wrexham up 5 0 on their way to winning the division and promotion to the league with 101 points. Doughty has committed a foul over on the far side. He's going to get a yellow card. It's just an automatic yellow card now. If you pull a player back when that's a chance of a counter-attack, you're getting a yellow card. And he's just got to know that. It's not like Graham Burks is going to sprint away from him. Just let him go. You've, he's still got to beat seven of your players. Liverpool coming forward up towards the midpoint of the Luton half as they try and search to get back on terms in this game in which they have conceded to Chidozi Ogbeni's fourth goal of the season. His last goal was against Brighton in that game where they... <laughs> Oddly won by four goals to nil. It was like a cracker's game, wasn't it? It's absolutely mad. I mean, you know, no one ever saw that coming. But then I don't think many people saw Luton losing to Sheffield United a couple of weeks ago. Here's Diaz down the left-hand side, trying to take on the defender, Mengi. He turns it back infield instead. And then it goes all the way back to the halfway line. And it's with uh, Virgil van Dijk. It remains 1-0 to Luton. And... Uh, Kelleher, who's deputising for Allison tonight, would have played in the League Cup final anyway on Sunday against Chelsea. But the goalkeeping position is another one of those which is suffering from uh, muscular problems. And the hamstrings seem to be going all up and down the country, don't they? Here's Gomez down the left, onto Gravenberg. And then back down the left again it goes. Osho with an attempted clearance, but it comes back to Elliot inside the box. And the Conga has to do brilliantly to get beyond him, win him back and smack it clear. And the Conga, who made a fantastic intervention in the game against Manchester United on Sunday when he blocked a Bruno Fernandes effort, has just made a match-saving tackle. Yeah, he has. And he had to be so careful because he was the wrong side of Harvey Elliott. But he just took his time. He knew he was probably stronger physically than Elliott. And just when he had that opportunity, he just lent in to the Liverpool forward and managed to scoop his ankle around and take the ball away. Away by Osho again. And now it's as high up on that left-hand side as Mengi's going to get. It's played back towards the left-hand side. And then there's a foul by Gomez, is there? And if he, uh, reluctant to give it, eventually does. Rob Edwards was appealing for it on this near side. Uh, Jurgen Klopp's furious having a word with the linesman on the touchline and it is a Luton Town ball I mean Luton are unmistakably and unapologetically direct they have the fewest build up attacks in the Premier League they love to get it high up into opposition territory build from there get crosses into the box they are the team that have registered the most open play crosses in the league they've won the most aerial duels in the league and they are ruthless when they have a chance they convert it their big chance conversion rate is the best in the league. 58% of the big chances they get, they score. And they've scored here tonight. Lethal, aren't they? But I just, I, I love it because especially Premier League defenders, it's not something they will be used to. They don't come up against it very often. What a ball that is. It's a lovely ball. Whipped out towards the near side by Barkley. Into Ogbeni, who's on the edge of the air. And he's cutting in on his left foot. Then going on his right. Then going back on his left again. Skipping away, trying to get a shot into a crowd of red shirts and it comes back out to Laconga on the edge of the air after he was crowded out now Woodrow down the left the goalkeeper's come out brilliantly and actually got there ahead of Woodrow just hesitated slightly and Liverpool survived yet another Liverpool, uh, Luton attack and they bowled that out brilliantly Kelleher has found Elliot who slipped it down the right looking for Diaz but it's watched by Amari Bell who takes it out towards the far side and then it goes out for a throw into Luton opposite us but that was a an odd passage of play because immediately that Kelleher had taken the ball off the toes of Cawley Woodrow, he was up looking and bowling the ball superbly like a fast-paced West Indian bowler out towards the far side and finding Harvey Elliott. Yeah, I mean, their, their direct speed in terms of their attacks Liverpool is right up there um, in, in the Premier League. They, it, it's what they want. They actually probably don't 
particularly like when a team sits in and they have to try and manufacture chances when it opens up and they can break on you and that's where you've got to be really really careful even when you're attacking as a team like Luton are you've got to be wary of your positioning ready in case that ball is given away well it's been a busy night so far 58% of the ball has been uh, owned by Liverpool up until this point 42% for uh, Luton and uh, Aerial Jules won 57.1% for Luton and 42% for Liverpool up until this point. Forward by Osho after a poor kick out. It's headed down by Morris and then back to him by Corley Woodrow. A little turn past Wataru Endo and then collected by uh, Tahith Chong who sends it back to Osho. Lukonga who's just right of the centre circle and then into Osho again. This is Amari Bell far side. As Luton hold on to the ball, they try to send it down the left with Doughty, who's stopped by Connor Bradley. Does well, and the ball loose in the opposition territory. And Barkley was flinging himself at it, trying to win it, scrapping for it. Didn't come off. Luton have won it back, giving it away. Won it back, giving it away. And then Elliott sends it to his goalkeeper. 1-0 to Luton. Yeah, he doesn't look like he struggles with pressure, does he, Connor Bradley? Lovely little sort of Croy flick in between Doughty's legs. Well, he's given the ball away. And Woodrow has picked it up down the left-hand side, looks to take him on, it goes out for a throw. And instead of uh, deciding to take it quickly, he will wait and allow Alfie Doughty to launch one into the box and see what happens next. 23 gone. It's Barkley, oh, lovely little body swerve to take it away from Gravenberg. And then Gravenberg gets back at him too quickly. And Cody Gakpo drags Liverpool up the pitch towards the halfway line, right to the centre circle. Elliot tries to bend it in behind for Gakpo to go and chase, but that's going to be picked up by Thomas Kaminski in the goal away to our left, who has uh, played the most passes into the final third this season for Luton, which sort of gives you an indication <laughs> of their approach. <laughs> yeah, he's the... He's the launcher. <laughs> Right-footed launch machine. And there he is, look at him, clipping the ball up high into the chest of Ogbeni, won by Colt Morris, who then loses out to Diaz, who put him under pressure. The ball into the centre circle, it just inside the Luton half, and Liverpool have it. It's forward to McAllister, bit of space for him to operate in. He fired that in behind Diaz, it wasn't a great ball, and it goes straight out of play. The idea was right, the execution not so. And after 25 minutes, they're still behind here, Liverpool. Yeah, I thought that was an opportunity to shoot, actually, for McAllister that opened up. They didn't step out, Luton. He could have taken a strike. We've seen him score a, a wonderful goal against Fulham earlier in the season. Yeah. He scored a wonderful goal on Saturday, didn't he? The way he used his feet. Oh, oh given away cheaply by Laconga. Comes back on the edge of the area to Gravenberg. He hits it straight at Osho, though. Wataro Endo takes it on. Gives it to Luis Diaz, who tries to travel. And then Mengi just pokes out a foot and pushes it away it goes back into the box Elliot chasing Amari Bell's going to see it out it's a goal kick away to our left hand side obviously if you take out Nunez Salah and Jota out of even the Premier League's top scorers you're going to lose a hell of a lot of goals that's 33 of their 59 Premier League goals tonight so you talk about half their goal power has been reduced yeah yeah of course and that's why they would be the starters I think uh, maybe Diaz would get in ahead of one of them Gravenberg trying to play the ball to uh, Joe Gomez who wanders into a tight knot of white shirts about 10 yards in front of the D goes back to uh, Van Dijk who switches the ball into uh, McAllister who tries to turn it around the corner for Gakpo wanted a foul he's not going to get that Bell will get it back to his goalkeeper and then it will eventually be cleared upfield by Thomas Kaminsky doesn't find a white shirt but uh, just sends Liverpool further back into their own half he found the final third I think just yes, about yes he did just about yeah uh, ball cleared by Kelleher he's played a few long balls tonight by the way uh, Tahith Chong shrugs off McAllister back to Amari Bell who's short of the halfway line we were talking about the red zone earlier on and uh, you said that you didn't like being in it I mean I couldn't get there I was amber well you were on the way 
Um, were you ever in the red zone? What did it actually feel like? Seriously? No, I, I, wouldn't, I honestly okay, wouldn't know. Okay. I'm, being, I'm being genuine. In which case, I wonder whether or not sometimes the noise around you being tired and all these games being talked about, you know, 26 in 99 days, I mean, that's a hypothetical because they might not get through in the FA Cup. They might not get through in the Europa League. So that might not happen at all. Uh, but if it was to... Um, obviously that's what everyone's discussing so therefore people start talking about red zones etc etc can that cause more problems than actually the fatigue itself because it's in your mind well of course you know it's such a mental game is is football just the same as so many other sports the one thing i would say is what is different than than it is in my time is that you you're trapped now you can't get away with just having a game where you kind of get through it with maybe a slight niggle that that doesn't happen anymore you're trapped with that thing that's shoved in your back that they can just look up to a laptop and see exa- exactly what you're doing and also the way your team presses and Liverpool are a team that has to have high energy uh, here is Gomez down that left hand side moving towards the edge of the area right footed shot towards the far corner it's well wide well tonight is 242 appearances in senior football for Joe Gomez he's certainly getting closer he has managed now 13 shots in 22 Premier League appearances this season and uh, after just 18 in his previous 108 that shows a marked improvement but he's still searching for his first ever goal <laughs> and you could sense it with the crowd and he keeps getting sucked into it Joe Gomez that wasn't the right option there to try and curl that in from under his, his feet there was better options than that but he's even getting drawn in he wants it he wants, he it. Does, right. he he wants, wants it he does you're right he wants to get that off his back <laughs> He wants to get that off his back and that little uh, chip that they now sew into your spine. <laughs> it's actually like a sports bra thing, isn't yeah, it, it, that is. they wear yeah. and, and they put it on your... They put it on your back or your front or your chest? Where is it? Where no, it it's, like it's on the back, is which it? I always think if you landed on it, that must be painful. Might just wear an Apple Watch or one of those ring things that they've got now. Surely that's easier. You're not allowed to wear jewellery, are you? There must be a more easier way of tracking everything than having a, that thing on strap to you well if you think of it let me come in on it you might make a few quid and here we go that could be our project for the international break Dean not that anybody else has thought about it ball sent upfield by Kelleher again it's not quite right it's just t- taken away by uh, Ted Mengi. Bell takes it to halfway he then collides with a couple of red shirts it's really congested in the centre circle and a bit of Liverpool poise sends it out towards Gakpo Gakpo punts it on towards uh, Luis Diaz who's down on the inside left a right footed shot which had no venom straight down the throat of Kaminsky he just sort of chopped inside and then toe poked it towards goal and it was saved by the goalkeeper yeah I think they've been quite brave actually Luton at times when they play they are leaving themselves 3v3 but I think they fancy that I think they fancy themselves 1v1 the three centre-backs against Liverpool's and at the moment they're just about edging it well Luton have now scored in each of their last 13 Premier League matches that is an impressive feat for a side that are newly promoted to the Premier League now among the uh, current Premier League sides only Spurs are on a longer scoring run in the top flight that's quite some statistic I think well it is when you think so many teams do come up to the Premier League and just don't look like they're going to score a goal and they're constantly thinking we need a striker we need a striker even the ones that spend money yeah I know yeah it's just uh, there's confidence you can see it in anyone that's been playing at the top end of the pitch for Luton What's that down to the fact that they've actually just got good goal-scoring individuals that they've had for a while and there is talent in the lower leagues? Or is it that they are just incredibly well-coached? I think it has to be both. It has to be. Here's Ogbeni from a free kick which has been given on the right-hand side. Barkley took it, gave it to Ogbeni and there's now got it back. He's about 15 yards back from the right side of the area. He's uh, gone to Ogbeni and then got it back, then swivelled away from McAllister, then passed Endo and then tried to push the ball out towards the left-hand side but there was luck- reluctant to release it. Doughty's cross is blocked by Draven Burke. There was an offside flag up anyway, which is criminal really from Doughty because he travelled a long way with the ball there, Barkley. I just wonder whether or not it was the delay by Barkley yeah, that it was, was the problem. It was. I think that's what he was frustrated about, Doughty, is that he constantly was trying to keep himself onside, but also give himself an advantage. 1-0 to Luton Town after 30 minutes live on Talk Sport tonight with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Enterprise has 450 branches with all the vehicles your business needs. Here's Wataro Endo. The Japanese player sends it in towards Luis Diaz who slides along the floor and pokes it goalwards and it trickles past the post. 
Again, an opportunity for Luis Diaz. They're getting closer and closer and closer. He's getting closer and closer and closer, but still yet no goal for Liverpool. Yeah, he does brilliantly though, Diaz, and, and so does Endo, who just scoops the ball over the top of La Conga, and it's just inches away for Diaz, who can't quite stretch that hamstring enough to get his foot to wrap around the ball and into the back of the net and it just dribbles wide but the way he didn't just stop his run he made sure that he then darted in behind Lokonga for the option for Endo I thought it was uh, it would probably have been a save by Kaminsky if it was on target he left that knowing full well where it was going here's Gravenberg through the middle played in by Gakpo he got held up and then he got another shot away from the edge of the box it was saved by Kaminsky and the Liverpool crowd not happy because Gakpo had made a run down the inside right channel and actually was unmarked he wasn't spotted by Gravenberg. No, he took the attempt on, didn't he? He made it easy for Kaminsky. And yes, the option was there. I don't mind that so much. It's really easy for us all to sit here and see exactly where every spare player is. But I thought he had the confidence to take the shot on. Well, it is 1-0. And uh, Liverpool, who uh, refused to use the significant number of injuries as an excuse for their derailment of any quadruple bid that they might be going for you and Klopp said it doesn't matter what happens you know if we end up losing tonight or losing the cup final we're not going to blame it on injuries we certainly are depleted in number in the forward area in particular but there are other absences too and Curtis Jones looked like he'd suffered quite a nasty injury at the weekend as well uh, Lekonga swivelling forward and playing it into Barkley whose eyes are darting now as he feeds Ogbeni a little bit too heavy for him and he's driven well wide out to the corner flag but Barkley is there in support he gets it then sends the ball centrally too close to the goalkeeper disappointing delivery from Barkley and it's cleared away by Kelleher and he immediately releases it upfield Osho does brilliantly to hold off the attentions of Gakpo but Diaz is quickly over to it to retrieve it and he runs at the backpedalling Mendy and goes to the edge of the area goes on the outside of the box towards the left hand side Mengi comes across again stabs at the ball tries to prod at it to win it from Diaz the Colombian showing his strength and versatility to keep hold of it he's desperate to hold on to it here and gives it back to Gomez eventually and Liverpool stay in possession brilliant from Mengi absolutely brilliant trying to have a little nibble to try and win the ball but without giving that foul away excellent defending Liverpool 0, Luton 1, Talk Sport. Remember on Talk Sport 2, Arsenal underway against FC Porto at the Estadio do Dragão in Portugal. Every time I've been to that stadium, it rained. Here's Diaz moving towards the edge of the area. A right but he drives towards the far corner and he misses the target again. He was coming in from that left hand side, running at a 45 degree angle to go. He got to the edge of the penalty area after winning the ball high up from Gra well, Gravenberg winning the ball high up and feeding him but his shot was well wide of the target in the end yeah it was it was sloppy from Luton Ogbené just a loose pass ball into Diaz and actually Luton are allowing that they're allowing Liverpool to have an easy look at the goal from outside the area they don't want to have that pass played in behind them and Diaz has gone for the sort of knuckleball technique where you hit it with the inside of your foot and get it to dip at the end didn't dip enough 35 on the clock and Luton still lead Rob Edwards on the touchline uh, by the way I thought Rob Edwards who always looks immaculate I always think you know what a good looking fella he is he looks you know very well turned out he looked a little bit too well turned out today when I saw him uh, I just thought you know he just had a little bit of a glow up down there when he was doing his pre-match interviews yeah <laughs> the producer in my ear just said jealous and he's absolutely spot on <laughs> No, I don't. I don't. I just, don't there's it, no point it, in denying it. No, he just went that little step too far. Did I? Uh, here is uh, <laughs> Quanza, uh, picked up by Diaz after a little ricochet. He shifts it on to Gakpo, and across comes Amari Bell, makes the tackle, and Sean tries to escape and runs into a red jersey. Well, hold on, there was a foul there. Was there inside the D? Andy yeah, Madley's pulled it back. Yeah, I think there might have been a pulled shirt. Amari Bell, when he won the ball, there he got clattered from I think it was Gakpo who just didn't see him on his blind side and then obviously the referee 
and he madly wanting to allow the opportunity to counter attack and when it came to nothing he brought it back Jamie O'Hara and Jason Cundy will take your calls on the sports bar a little bit later 03717 the early sports breakfast tomorrow morning with Shabana Hearn precedes the tall sport breakfast with Alan Brazil's back tomorrow from his jaunt to Spain and Gabby Agbon the hall the guests include Ipswich striker Connor Chaplin Hull City manager Liam Rossini I'll be on at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning looking back at this game as well at 6am tomorrow morning and uh, Gus Poyet's coming on the show as well I hear there's a foul in the middle of the park the Liverpool fans aren't happy about it it's a Luton Town free kick and they continued to play the advantage the officials and the Congress sort of travelled backwards and as soon as that sort of became apparent that he was going to lose the ball he uh, gave the free kick but it was sort of a bit of six of one half a dozen of the other a few challenges have flown in before that which the Liverpool fans thought should have gone their way yeah a little bit of an edge there to Graham Birch in terms of didn't get his own way felt he was fouled originally and then just stepped across La Conga knowing what he was doing well no doubt that Luton have improved their attitude on the road this season as it has gone on they've picked up five points they've now scored nine goals from their last well three and a bit away games which is more than they managed in their first eight in the Premier League on the road incrementally they have got used to life in the big league and the way it stands at this moment in time they're out of the relegation zone and three points clear of Everton give you the odds in just a second from Labrets where Liverpool are behind to Luton and right now you can get Liverpool to come back and win at 11 to 10 on a Luton win is now 3 to 1 that's coming significantly the draw 9 to 4 and it's all thanks to Labrets adding plus big gamble aware.org Colton Morris under pressure plays it into Mengu holds off Elliot finds Colton Morris again good football by Luton their fans away to our left hand side not happy about the fact that Lecong has almost given it away he's done just about enough to squeeze out of a tight gap with a little back heel cry turn and then he's found Barkley who's found Mengi who's now moved up the pitch and now down the left the ball is with Corley Woodrow who powers into the left wing position gives it back to Doughty Doughty looks up fires it to the edge of the box Barkley trying to swivel away gives it back to Doughty across comes Connor Bradley what a challenge that was by the way inside the penalty area against the arch crosser Doughty Bradley just stepped in and pinched the ball and sparked a Liverpool attack through to Gravenberg it goes he runs through the centre circle plays it out wide to Diaz Diaz in the area tries to get it across a brilliant tackle by Mengi slides it against the Colombian and out of play and then it comes back off Mengi and out for a corner kick but it was a brilliant challenge what a great spell of football oh, it was Bradley the way he just read that and intercepted didn't just whack it forwards found a pass started a counter attack Gravenberch gives the ball just at the right time to Diaz you think he's in that's an unreal challenge from Mengi just the extra little bit of acceleration and then a sliding challenge fantastic he celebrated like he'd scored the winner in a World Cup final here is the uh, corner away to our left hand side it'll be taken by Alexis McAllister who knows what that feels like into the ball into the box it goes not the winner but to win it uh, it's headed away by Woodrow comes out to Bradley then Elliot edge of the area can hit them from range does hit it over the bar yeah they've had a few of them now Liverpool opportunities to shoot from distance and they've not really tested Kaminsky he's not looked troubled too many have gone up and over the crossbar as Elliot leant back once again and just got it slightly wrong they're looking for that strike that then dips at the end but if you don't get it right it never comes back down 100th appearance for Harvey Elliott today only goal this season the injury time winner against Crystal Palace although he did have a huge huge role in a late goal against Wolverhampton Wanderers in which he basically scored it just took a nick off a defender on the way in and they gave it to uh, the defender at an own goal which is frustrating if you're a striker or a forward player <laughs> it is yeah I mean, just, just quickly, just to go back, by the way, before Bradley made that interception, you know, Luton definitely go along a lot, very direct. But by the way, how good was that play from Lukonga into Barkley, through to Chong and out that to the left? It was brilliant football it, from Luton. And it was started by the fact that Lukonga, under pressure, swivelled between two Liverpool players with a little back heel Cruyff turn to get him out into space to yeah. play the ball forward in the first place. It was excellent and uh, Luton deserve credit 
And they are getting it at the moment. They lead by a goal to nil live on TalkSport tonight. They've got a big game next midweek live on TalkSport as well when they play Manchester City in the Cup. Paulie Woodrow is going to be booked here for an elbow, I think, on Jarrell Quansa. He uh, went up for a header. The arm came out. The free kick's been given and the yellow card has been given against Corley Woodrow. Yeah, look at this one for me. Yeah, the problem he has, and, and he's not really made much contact, but he's gone across looking at Quanza with his elbow pointed. He doesn't actually make contact with the elbow. He then crashes into Quanza. But it's the fact he's looking across and almost jumping into the Liverpool defender. It just it makes it look very obvious to the referee. Declan Rice got himself a booking after only 73 seconds tonight, diving in in a challenge in Porto in the Champions League knockout stages. It's still Porto nil, Arsenal nil on Talk Sport 2. Here is Harvey Elliott moving down the left, and Diaz makes an inside run. Ah, oh, it's a poor ball by Elliott. Cut out by Kaminsky and cleared away. Elsewhere tonight, Napoli nil, Barcelona nil in the Champions League last 16. In the EFL Trophy semi-final, it's Bradford City nil, Wickham nil for the right to play Peterborough on the 7th of April. And uh, the first thing I did last night when I came off there was send the producer of the Sunday session a text message. I think we should do the show from Wembley uh, on the 7th of April, the Peterborough against Bradford or Wickham game. Uh, Durham said, can I come? Straight away. Of course we said, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> two and a half minutes to go before half-time. Ogbeni throws the ball down the right-hand side into the path of Carlton Morris, who looks to try and keep it alive. Ogbeni keeps going, down to the corner flag. He'll produce a cross here into the near post, and Woodrow got across his marker but couldn't get onto the ball, and it was caught by Kelleher and cleared away. Did the ball come out and go back in again? I think it did. It's going to be a goal kick. Eagle-eyed linesman on this near side. Yes. He is rapid, though, isn't he, Ogbeni? He is. He's very fast. He's the second fastest player in the Premier League, yeah. behind Mickey van der Ven clocked at a top speed of 36.9 kilometres per hour that is I can tell you fast yeah what were you what was your top speed yeah <laughs> why that's no need <laughs> I, just, I was just asking it's the way you said it with knowledge of that's that's the sort of speed that's the red zone <laughs> <laughs> Ball poked forward to Diaz again by Gravenberg, who looks to release Elliott, edge of the D, cuts infield, runs into white shirts, and again, too many touches of the ball. Frustration from the Liverpool supporters, because they've had a lot of enterprising play towards the edge of the 18-yard box, but haven't really fashioned golden chances. They've had opportunities, they've missed the target, but they haven't tested Thomas Kaminsky enough in this opening 45 minutes they're missing Salah they're missing Jota they're missing Darwin Nunez and it's apparent they're 1-0 behind against Luton Town live on Talk Sport tonight who scored the goal after 13 minutes Chidozi Ogbeni with a header at the far post after superb work from Tahith Chong and Alfie Doughty down the left hand side well Luton have given Liverpool so many opportunities on the break two against two or three against three and they've just been so indecisive Liverpool first of all it was Diaz within the first two minutes and every single forward player has been guilty of that indecision and that but that's your chance you get that one little window before the Luton defenders are all back Van Dijk just up towards halfway and uh, Gomez then tries to swing it forward it's uh, headed away by Mengi and out on this near touchline and they'll go out for a throw in to Liverpool as we approach the final few seconds of a first half which has been rich in entertainment and uh, there's just a little bit of an issue here for Liverpool who do like to concede the first goal in games it was something that they had a problem with last season there'll be uh, two minutes of added time at the end of the first half um, they timed up recently they kept seven clean sheets in the last 17 games they had only kept one clean sheet in their previous ten They've lost their top defence tag to Arsenal in the Premier League over the last few weeks. But uh, they've conceded here again and now they need to get themselves out of a hole with their top scoring attack, missing half of its members. Ball sitting out towards the right, Bradley helps it on. It goes all the way back to the goalkeeper, Kaminsky, under pressure from Doughty. It wasn't a great ball back to his goalkeeper. Doughty's got it again and tries to rifle it forward, plays it against the... Uh, defender, uh, the Liverpool player and goes down to play 
for a throw-in deep inside his own half. Oh, it was a horrible ball back to Kaminsky from Doughty. Sort of waist-height, bouncing, skidding into him. Thought he did well in the end to get out to the left-hand side. But, you know, I was here for the, the Fulham game in the Carabao Cup and, you know, it looked up as if Fulham were comfortable as moans and grows. In the second half, within minutes, they were, they were ahead, Liverpool. That's what they can do to you. Well, I, you and I did that game together and Fulham basically made a huge mistake, didn't they? And let them in. Once you let them in, that's it. Here is Ogbenna. Great touch to get it away from uh, Gomez in towards uh, Corley Woodrow, who tried to finish on the volley, but it hit the top of his knee and it goes behind and away for a goal kick away to our right-hand side. Again, brilliant wing play by Ogbenna. Just getting away from Gomez, who totally committed himself and then just whips it in he sees Woodrow's dart to the near post and he just tried to improvise because it was at waist height by just trying to let it kiss off his thigh and up and over the goalkeeper and it just came right off the uh, the patella yeah well Corley Woodrow whose both goals have come in the cup competitions the last of which came in this city against Everton it was a 90th minute winner and he's not the uh, one who the cameras will be trained on at half time they will go to Chidozi Ogbeni who got his fourth goal of the season and what a goal it was well constructed and for all the talk about them being a long ball team that get the ball high up the pitch and work from there it was a really well crafted goal Taith Chong and Alfie Doughty involved down the left hand side before the ball was spilt by Kelleher came to the back post and Ogbeni was there Absent, hampered by absences quite possibly Liverpool face a fight if they want to go four points clear of Manchester City at the top of the Premier League table because at half time it's Liverpool nil, Luton Town won well as the uh, officials make their way down the tunnel I've got to say Dean Ashton well played Luton Town they've been full of energy full of running they've played risky football and they've got the lead Possibly largely because Luis Diaz has missed so many chances, it's literally unbelievable. But they do have the lead, and I'm really impressed with Luton Town here tonight. Ellie, you said it there, risky, brave, um, whatever you want to call it. It, it. it takes a lot to say to your three centre-backs, we're going to leave you 1v1 or 2v1 even at, at times, and we're going to back you. It means that we can get up the pitch. It means we can have some sort of control and threat, which they've absolutely had. And I just love the way they've gone about it. And, you know, I talked about it before the game. When you see that team sheet of Liverpool, you do maybe have to go, actually, this is our chance. And I feel like they've done that and they've taken it and they're starting to frustrate the Liverpool crowd and the Liverpool players. And that's exactly what you want to do. Let's talk about the goal in the 12th minute then. Chong with a cross from the left. So they've found space enough to get a decent cross in. Ogbeni coming in from the right. He's got all the time in the world in the box to head it home which he does defensively where do you start with if you're, if you're Jurgen Klopp analysing that well first of all I, I was looking at you know what Lewin are going to do is they are going to flood the penalty area they've been very very good at that because they know when the ball's wide it's coming in and um, what surprised me is there wasn't one Liverpool midfielder that thought I'm just going to drop into a position that maybe I can then help the defence and then Gomez is left 2v1 because Chong has got away from Endo and, and, dr and driven to the byline. But it's about playing the conditions. I think about this all the time with players. Are, are you, as a player, are you understanding the conditions, the players you're up against? You know, Kelleher's a young goalkeeper. Of course he is. He's under pressure coming in for Allison. It's wet. It's skiddy so flash it along the floor I mean Doughty should have done it and Chong does that and, and I think that's intelligence in terms of using what you know using the conditions and then flood the penalty area and then you get your awards um, if you're Jurgen Klopp what do you say to Luis Diaz who's missed at least three really good chances in that first half is it one of those where you can really say at least you're in the position to miss because he should be putting at least one away shouldn't he I think he's too experienced really to, to be like that yeah. I, I think you know Klopp would have the right to say to him look you should you should be doing better for us you know you are the sort of elder statesman in terms of um, experience especially in, with in, the ones in, that were missing in, yeah in a Liverpool shirt I thought he started the game so brightly so sharp but there was a lack of a lack of confidence which surprised me especially with that first opportunity it took him about 
five touches to even get the ball under control when it just needed one out of his feet. And that makes the difference when you're playing a, a team like Luton. To get that early goal, I think it would have been very different for the rest of the Liverpool players. Since then, it's been a bit stodgy. Um, I'm wondering what Dan Ashworth, who may well end up at Manchester United, who knows, his garden's looking good at the moment, but wonder what he's making of uh, Ted and Mengu. Man United let go. He looks really good at the heart of the uh, Luton defence. I think Lukonga, Jurgen Klopp mentioned it in the press conference yesterday. How on earth have Arsenal let him go on loan uh, to Luton? I don't know if that was a little dig at Arsenal uh, feeding uh, a side that's playing against uh, Liverpool tonight. lukonga has been brilliant in the midfield. There was a moment just before... Half time though, Dean, I want to highlight, and it was on this right hand side. Ogbeni was up against Joe Gomez. All Ogbeni's done is just, just inside the Liverpool half. So Luton on the attack. All Ogbeni's done is just push the ball past Gomez, run around him, run onto it, got across in, and Joe Gomez kind of ambles back. He's he's turned around. He's, he's been left for dead basically he's been left standing, and he turns around, doesn't really chase too hard, knows he's been beaten. I'm thinking in a Euros year. If you want to have a chance of playing for uh, England, getting even remotely close to the squad, what on earth are you doing? I know left-back isn't his position. There's a left-back on the bench, Andy Robertson, but I, I just thought it was a really strange situation where Liverpool are one down and it's that easy for Ogbeni to get past Joe Gomez. It was pathetic is what it was, Aid. You're right. He, he didn't... There was no intensity to the way that he closed down Ogbeni, knowing that Ogbeni wants to push it and run. And he just let it go round the opposite side of him oh Benny round round the other side and you're right Jomez, uh, Joe Gomez he didn't sprint back and they are the little things that I'm sure Jurgen Klopp will be looking at he was furious for so much of that half Jurgen Klopp he was absolutely livid and I'm pretty sure he will show that at half time uh, it is 1-0 to Luton. Yep, do not adjust your radios. It's 1-0 to Luton. Jadosi Ogbeni with the header on 12 minutes. Liverpool nil, Luton 1. Over on TalkSport 2 right now. They're what, 22, 23 minutes in to the Champions League. Round of 16, first leg. Porto nil, Arsenal nil. Declan Rice booked after 73 seconds, as Sam was telling you. And Porto have just hit the woodwork and then fired the rebound inches wide of David Raya's goal as he just stood helpless in between the frame of the goal stays Porto nil, Arsenal nil. That's live on Talksport Two right now. You listen to kickoff on Talksport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. And here at Anfield, Liverpool have got work to do. There will be 14 minutes of extra time. With Betfair's 90-minute payout, you don't have to wait for the final whistle to celebrate. Because your winning bet will be paid out in full at 90 minutes. Betfair. Applies to match odds 90 market or markets with a 90 icon. Sportsbook exclusive. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Kick off on Talk Sport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Playing host for the big game? Feed the squad with a meal deal exclusively on Just Eat. Save over 45% on KFC's finger kicking double bucket and 25% or more on matchday meal deals from Burger King, Pizza Hut Delivery, German Doner Kebab, Greg's, and more. It's the easiest win of the season. Did somebody say just eat? Participate in stores in selected locations subject to availability. Saving compared to individual items, delivery fees, and other charges may apply. In 17th of March, see justeat.co.uk for details. Ask Screwfix, we're giving all our customers a big boost this February with 10% off orders placed on the Screwfix app. Simply download the app, turn on your exclusive app offer permissions, and job done. Your Screwfix Boost discount code will be delivered to you the very next day. You can then use the code to place as many Screwfix app orders as you like in February and get 10% off every time. Still not downloaded the Screwfix app? Download now. Season and C's apply. No minimum spend. For full details, visit screwfix.com. We all fantasize about our perfect home. Watching the big game, cozied up in the snug. Balmy summer nights with the kids playing on the lawn. We're playing around my football! But come on, this isn't real. Listen, if you're serious about making your fantasy a reality, find out what your home is worth instantly with a free online valuation estimate. Get real about moving. Get on the market. Most common time to obtain an online quote between 1st of June 2022 and 30th of September 2022 is under three minutes. Excludes Northern Ireland. McDelivery, you in? Oh, am I? 
What a day. I need six chicken McNuggets, or maybe nine, or maybe six and a cheeky cheeseburger. Makes sense. With something sweet to follow, like an apple pie, or a McFlurry, or I could get a milkshake instead. You know, a nice halfway house of drink and ice cream. Jane, the game's just starting. Oh, hi. Yeah, sorry. I'm in. There's nothing quite like a McDelivery. You in? At participating restaurants only. 18 plus. Serving times, delivery fees and terms apply. See app or mcdonalds.com for details. Kickoff on Talk Sport. With Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Enterprise has vans of all shapes and sizes. So if you've got a plan, we've got a van. Feel the full force of football. Have we got something special for you? Kickoff live. What a great bit of play. On Talk Sport. We're in the Champions League, live on TalkSport 2 right now. It's Porto nil, Arsenal nil. Porto going close. They've hit the woodwork through Galeno. Uh, we talk, talked about uh, pre-match. A free kick from uh, Odegaard comes in. It's headed behind for an Arsenal corner. Porto nil, Arsenal nil. 25 or so gone in that game. That's live on TalkSport 2 right now here at Anfield. It is Liverpool nil, Luton Town 1 at half-time. And let's get the half-time odds with Labrooks. Odds update on TalkSport with Ladbrokes. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus, be gambler.org. So Luton 1-0 uh, up at halftime. Liverpool are 23-20 to, to win. Luton are 13-5. to five. The draw is 19-10. to 10. Luis Diaz has missed a bag full of chances to score any time. He was 9-4. to four. That's been price boosted now to 5-2. to two. Virgil van Dijk to score ahead of was 6-1. to one. That's now 7-1. to one. And those are the latest odds with Labbrook's 18 plus speed gamble. Aware.org. Odds update on TalkSport with Ladbrokes. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus be gambler Well, I was telling you, as goal as Porto, Arsenal. Let's uh, listen in to the TalkSport 2 commentary with Andy Townsend and Jim Proudfoot. The England man is able to uh, easily pick that up at the back for Arsenal and get them going from the back again. We're 27 minutes in, Andy. And then... Yeah, Ben White there from those corners is trying to uh, just disturb the goalkeeper from any of those wide free kicks. And it's going to be difficult to get away with that. You can tell already that the minute he stands anywhere near the goalkeeper, there's a there's a full-scale pushing and shoving going on. And the referee's called Ben White over and had a word with him. Just be a little bit careful. And we welcome listeners from Talk Sport. There it is, nil-nil with 27 minutes gone in this first leg of the round of 16 tie between Porto and Arsenal. And Arsenal have been the better team, but could easily have been behind as the ball has swung inside the penalty area now and is swept away by uh, Nico Gonzalez. It's uh, a night where goal-scoring opportunities have been at a real premium, but there was a, a miss of an open goal from three yards by Wenderson Galeno that really let Arsenal off the hook. The ball swept inside the penalty area from Conce Sao. Galeno peeling away, hit a right-footed volley which cannoned back off the left-hand post. He came back to him. He was the quickest to react, only three yards out. David Raya struggling to get across, and he's inexplicably hooked it wide of the right-hand post. Only by about six inches, but those six inches crucial as far as Arsenal were concerned because it's kept the clean sheet intact, and that's been far and away the clearest opportunity that either side have had so far, Andy Tanzer. Yeah, it has, yeah. Lots of possession for Arsenal. They've had more of the ball, um, again, without really finding that, that cutting edge, that incisive ball forward or that brilliant bit of individual skill. Let's hope that Martinelli, the more he sees of the ball, we saw a little flash from him about five minutes ago where he picked the ball up one-on-one with Jean Mario, skipped past him, got to the byline, stood across him, need more of that. We just haven't really been able to get into those attacking positions. We haven't seen an awful lot of the kind of Saka down the right flank so far either. Just one yellow card so far, which came Declan Rice's way, just past the minute mark. Uh, but they've uh, been no uh, undue concerns for Rice since then. Sack has got possession for the Gunners, about five yards inside Porto territory. He's worked it back for Saliba, and he in turn goes uh, deeper still for Gabriel. And now out towards the left hand side for Arsenal's Jakob Kivior. And uh, he too has been pushed, and it's a free kick that'll be taken by uh, Arsenal. We've played half an hour. Live commentary continues on TalkSport 2. If you've got the app, you can uh, just swipe left, swipe right, keep abreast of all the action. It is Porto nil, Arsenal nil. Yeah, that is live over on TalkSport 2. It's still half time here at Anfield. Luton Town 1 up. What's happening in the EFL Trophy? semi-final at Valley Parade Mark Wilson it's still Bradford nil Wickham nil but it's the League 2 side Bradford that have enjoyed much 
much the better of the game so far. Great chance inside the opening 60 seconds. Long ball forward from Kevin MacDonald. Tyler Smith, competition's top scorer. Great touch takes him into the box, but his shot was weak and straight at strike. Then we saw Clark Adore batter a half volley inches over the top from the edge of the area. And then uh, new signing, Callum Kavanagh. Two and two for him coming into this one. Picked up a loose ball, edge of the box. Fired it goalbound, just bobbled the wrong side of the post. At the other end, not seen too much from Wickham. Did have an early free kick, but Luke Lee, who uh, is a bit of a specialist at set pieces, he fired into the wall. We mentioned the pitch before. It looks really tough out there. There's a few spots where the ball's not bouncing and the heavens have opened here in Bradford. But the home fans, pretty happy so far. Winner plays Peterborough in the final. It's Bradford nil, Wickham nil. Yeah, winner loses... Sorry, winner plays uh, Peterborough United in the EFL Trophy final. I shouldn't say that because we never, ever beat Wickham. So if Wickham get through, I will be very fearful indeed. Let's see how that pans out. Keep you in touch with that. And with the game live on TalkSport 2, where half an hour has gone, Porto nil, Arsenal nil. Liverpool are out first for the second half. Luton just trotting their way out and dancing around a few cones before they take up their positions. I'll remind you that the cricket returns, the fourth test on TalkSport 2, Friday, early hours, 3.30am, live and exclusive. You can also watch it on the TalkSport Cricket YouTube channel as well, England 2-1 down got battered in the third test, so that's Friday, early hours, TalkSport 2, 3.30am and the TalkSport Cricket YouTube channel you can watch it as well, and there's a daily following on podcast as well, getting ready for the second half it's Liverpool 0, Luton 1 live from the Premier League, and exclusive and only on TalkSport here is the, the second half with Dean Ashton and Sam Matface. Uh, Liverpool in red shirts, red shorts and red socks get us up and underway at the start of the second 45. And Luton Town who lead by goal to nil in white shirts with a orange thick stripe down their left breast and black shorts and white socks attacking the goal away to our left in the Anfield Road end. Liverpool attacking the cop and there has been a change at half time. For the visitors, Alba Sambi Lakonga has been replaced by Peli Rodok in Panzu. Apparently you can only replace people with the same number of names, uh, light for light. <laughs> it's a blow, you would say, because Lakonga had been excellent, I thought, in that first half. The calmness he shows alongside Barkley. Massive game to come into for Panzu. Yeah, it's huge. And... Uh, he will be charged with trying to stiffen up that area and Lekonga did such a very good job actually in that first 45 minutes and Peli Ruddock in Pansu will want to do the same as well. Liverpool have the ball on the edge of their own penalty area and they won't be unduly fussed about Luton taking the lead. It usually stirs them into action. They have a history of coming back and winning games from being behind. They have taken 19 points from losing positions already this season. And it's, it's not a new thing, the mentality, the resolve that they've shown. Here is Ogbeni dancing down that right-hand side. And he's got the better of Joe Gomez again, who's had a tricky night with him. Played in towards the middle of the park and Ross Barkley, who guides it back into the centre circle. And Liverpool do have the most wins when conceding first and the most points from losing positions in the Premier League since Klopp was appointed in October 2015. And again, when they get going here and the crowd get behind them, they're very, very difficult to stop. And, you know, Adrian mentioned it at half-time and he's absolutely right to. Joe Gomez just easily breezed past by Ogbeni. Well, it's just happened straight away at the start of the second half. He's gone to step in. Ogbeni's just nipped it past him and he was away. Incredible that he would just be so lax in the way that he... You know, you think he'd be really low and on the half turn. He wasn't at all. Ball won by Luton on halfway, sent down the left by Mengi. It's out of play on this near touchline. Anfield is the ground that Luton have played at the most in their league history without a victory. Over the years, there have been some epic, epic battles between the two. Lots of high-scoring draws, actually, over the early years of the 70s and 80s when they were up in the first division. Foul by... Mengi on Luis Diaz, he was manhandling him and the ball went up just inside Luton territory and it's going to be a Liverpool free kick. It's funny because Luis Diaz actually was the one that was manhandling Mengi and then Mengi just was stronger. <laughs> was stronger and also wrapped his, his arm around the throat of, of Diaz and threw him to the floor. What? Is that a yellow card for Jurgen Klopp? Or is it for one of his backroom starts? Peter Kravietz, it is. 
Um, I did actually contact the FA today because uh, Jurgen Klopp was on two yellow cards and it would be banned should he get one tonight. And I wonder whether or not that, that would translate into the cup final on Sunday. They tell me it's competition specific now. And that isn't the case. Yeah, initially it was not competition specific. And now it is. I wonder if that's a new development. Uh, here is uh, Van Dijk. Back to Wataro Endo. Slip towards the near side and Kwanzaa. And then goes back to his goalkeeper, Kelleher. I'm old enough to remember a, a nil-nil at the Kenny back in 1987 in the FA Cup. But followed by a nil-nil here that went to extra time. Followed by a second replay down at Kenilworth Row, which Brian Steen, Mick Harford and Mike Newell settled in favour of Luton. Kenny Dalglish wasn't happy that day. Jürgen Klopp not happy now as the ball comes forward to Elliot on the edge of the area. He drags his shot so far wide. He hit it on the edge of the D. Left footed down towards the bottom left corner as the goalkeeper looks at it. It went so far wide. I think it went out of bounds beyond the width of the six-yard box. Yeah, it did. It was a horrible scuffed effort from Harvey Elliott it was interesting as he just walked off the pitch one of the coaching staff went over to him just put their arm around him and was just giving him probably a little bit of advice don't lose confidence continue to believe in yourself you've got to sometimes you know, if you're not playing the best or you've had a few efforts that are poor you know Salah misses plenty of chances also but just continues it's that mentality to continue and believe a few of our newspaper colleagues downstairs sitting behind the dugouts are suggesting that Jürgen Klopp was a little bit unhappy about the negativity inside the ground in that first half. Woodrow wins it back off Elliot. Bradley wins it back off Woodrow. It's won back by Corley Woodrow and cleared up field, but Gomez sends it forward and Graven Burke on the edge of the centre circle plays it to Endo. Into Bradley once again, who tucks the ball in field, does brilliantly, gets to the edge of the area, sets it up perfectly. It's Luis Diaz, how has he missed? He's hit it straight against Tedan Mengi. It was a brilliant run by Bradley and he opened it right up and they're not finished yet. Gomez coming forward, onto Diaz inside the box, tries to finish all the centre, but there a handball there by Luton Town defender. The referee is going to send it out for a corner and consult the VAR. Mengi looking as if he's a little bit guilty. I mean, I could see that it is harm from way up here. We're up in the, the top echelons of the main stand and even I could see that it definitely hit the yeah. back of Osho's arm but he turned his back completely he had no idea where the ball was it's actually Osho it hits the back of his shoulder I don't think you can give that I don't think you can give that surely you can't give that Annie Madley still consulting with the VAR tonight who is Simon Hooper but because he's turned his back and his arms are then in what you could say is an unnatural position and it's hit the arm and stopped Play it going on. across no penalty Play no, on. That, that, I'm glad because you're right that is the right decision ball out over on the far side and uh, it goes out for a corner and common sense prevails as the ball comes in from the left hand side by Elliot. it's an out swinger Van Dijk tries to get up there, he's loose inside the box Morris can't get it clear, it comes to the Diaz, it's hit against him and goes behind and away for a offside decision which came <laughs> very late in the day but was eventually given yeah but let's just go back to that chance for Diaz it was brilliant by Conor Bradley just weaving his way through the middle of the pitch just lent it to Luis Diaz and he's got to get his head up and see exactly the picture in front of him what he doesn't see is Mengi just stepping right in his way and he just hit it straight against him it was a brilliant chance again for Diaz Anfield is such a fortress for Liverpool the noise has been questioned at times even Jurgen Klopp in the first half just suggesting that he needed a little bit more from his team. But maybe they've just got used to being entertained. Only one defeat in their last 54 Premier League home games since April 2021 was a defeat against Leeds United in October 2022. We were here for that. When it is rocking, there are not too many places like it and Liverpool need their crowd now. 53 gone, it's Liverpool nil, Luton Town 1. They were seven and a half to one shots before the game, Luton. Ball loose in midfield, Woodrow trying to win it. Comes through to Connor Bradley, poked back into the path of Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa sends it out to the far side. 
Peli Ruddock and Pantu can't get there. The ball's loose again. And uh, well, Doughty tried to win it, couldn't get there. And the ball goes out towards the near touchline. And it's with Connor Bradley and Liverpool in the right full back position, trailing by a goal to net. Yeah, really good intensity from Liverpool at the start of this second half, which is exactly what you would expect. Lovely ball that to Bradley. Elliot playing it down into the right wing position. Bradley gets beyond the first defender and then Doughty comes steaming back at him and flings himself at the cross and goes out for another corner I'll tell you what they don't lack effort do they Luton do not give up anything do they brilliant from Doughty to get back and stop the cross here's the corner to be taken by Alexis McAllister wearing black gloves tonight as he places the ball down in the quadrant in front of the cop away to our right the tightly packed cop and it's swung in towards the far post it's over the head of everyone clip further clear Bradley will get hold of it here and Connor Bradley jinks him past Ogbeni then swishes it to Elliot whose first time shot has a weakness to it so it's easily cleared by Amari Bell and it's sent out on the far side the left Wataro Endo back to Bradley Bradley right footed cross into the box is a good one it's high over Kwanzaa's head though and headed away by Bell once more collected right side and McAllister has it Elliot makes a run on the overlap he gets it clips it in towards the near post Quanta trying to get there Gakpo went up missed him and then it runs out the other side and Ogbeni is sprinting away and then that's the first time I've seen that in a while Virgil van Dijk just deciding to put his foot to the floor on the accelerator take three large steps and outpace everyone win the ball back and guide it rather serenely back to Kelleher yeah, he normally likes to get the old miles per gallon at a lovely little rate, doesn't he? Get the most out of that. And he just had to give it that little bit extra. Teased into the box by Bradley again. Luis Diaz sees uh, a ball dispossessed in front of him before he can latch onto it. He comes back on halfway. Elliot now jinking forward, running at pace at the Luton defence. He goes on the outside, gets into the box, was pulled back by Barkley. Tried a little trick to get past Chong. Chong does well, but then gives it away to Gakpo, who drives it in at the near post and saved down low by Kaminsky. And it's pushed behind and away for another Liverpool corner. Yeah, needed to be a good save that. Really quick snapshot from Gakpo. Just saw the loose ball, little swivel and hit it cleanly towards that near post which sometimes can catch goalkeepers out but Kaminsky down well it's 1-0 to Luton Town and we play 56 minutes of this game and uh, this is corner number 10 for Liverpool McAllister to take it and he'll hit it right footed in towards the near post and it's a brilliant header a supreme header for Virgil van Dijk who came steaming in unwatched unmarked unchallenged and he smashed it with the meat of his forehead into the far corner and Liverpool are level a brilliant goal from Virgil van Dijk his third of the season on his 250th start for Liverpool a corner from McAllister a brilliant brilliant header but I tell you what Luton Town will be upset by the marking it's 1-1 well, he's got away, that's what he's done. And Ogbeni's the closest to him, and he's looked around and gone, why am I ending up with Virgil van Dijk? Because I cannot handle him. Virgil van Dijk gets away, and he's not going to miss. So much pace on the delivery from McAllister. All he has to do is guide that past Kaminsky, which he does with ease, van Dijk. is a brilliant, brilliant header. Brilliant header, great goal from Liverpool. And it was uh, a supreme finish. They've won the ball again on the right-hand side. It's Elliot now into the penalty area, trying to go on the outside. And the tackle has come in, but it's gone loose to Bradley, whose shot is deflected towards goal. What a save by Kaminsky's left leg. He poked that out at the vital moment. They're about to bring on Andros Townsend here. The ball is out on the right-hand side. It's collected by Elliot. Thundered against the legs of the defender, and it's out of play and away for a throw down by the corner flag. I tell you what, that's an outstanding save, because it took a massive deflection. Kaminsky's already committed to his right-hand side, and then, like a cobra stinging out, he just sent that left leg out to just block it. It was brilliant. That's where goalkeepers are so good. They work so hard on it, day in, day out, on those deflections. It was supreme, actually, the way he flicked out that left leg at the vital moment and kicked it clear. Townsend is on. Corley Woodrow is off. And the ball has been thrown in from the right side. And it's headed into the net by Dakar after McAllister's cross. 
and all of a sudden the game has been turned on its head. Cody Gakpo with a snapshot header. The restart was quick. Lewin switched off. McAllister wasn't spotted. His body cross was instinctively prodded home by the head of Cody Gakpo. It's 2-1 Liverpool. Well, Lewin on the only ones from that corner and that end. Barcelona once switched off. And they paid the price and Lewin have done exactly the same. You just cannot. You know that Liverpool are going to come on strong. You know they're going to do things quickly to keep the fans on side. And it's exactly what they do. It's a quick throw from Connor Bradley. McAllister doesn't even think about it. He just flashes a volley across the box and Gakpo's there. He's alert. He's alive. And again, because the pace is on the ball, you don't have to manipulate your neck. All you have to do is let the ball hit your head and just direct it past the goalkeeper. Kaminsky can't move. Cody Gakpo, who came off the bench and scored at the weekend, has seen his output really improve. That's his fifth goal in his last 14 games. And now they're on the charge again with Elliot. Gakpo's made another run down the right-hand side. It's Cody Gakpo. And this time it's kicked away by Kaminsky at the near post and out for another corner. Napoli nil, Barcelona nil at half-time. Porto Arsenal nil nil. Coming to half-time on Talk Sport 2. Bradford nil, Wickham nil in the semi-finals of the EFL Trophy, the Bristol Street Motors Trophy. And Liverpool have come from behind to lead by two goals to one after turning it around in 90 seconds in this second half. Unbelievable turn of events between the 57th and the 59th minute. It was right at the end of that 57th minute and it was right at the beginning of the 59th. Ball in towards the penalty spot. Another header, brilliant save down to his left by Kaminsky, who jettisons out a big left hand to stop Van Dijk making it too. Well, it's pretty much a carbon copy. Again, it's a magnificent delivery from McAllister right onto the six-yard line. And Virgil van Dijk just cleans everyone out. Townsend was brushed aside. Barkley's then gone to try and head it. Virgil van Dijk's gone through absolutely everybody to get the header in. Barkley just about, I think, because his body is there, just takes some of the pace off the header from van Dijk and Kaminsky brilliant down to his left-hand side. Well, I don't know whether there's going to be an uncontested drop ball here or something. But Liverpool been given the ball back on the right-hand side on this near touch line, and they're going to send it into the box. Jordan Clark about to come on for uh, Luton, who trail here by two goals to one. Well, Gravenberg's <laughs> restarted the referee, who did drop the ball and give it to him, so he was in charge. Then forgot to blow his whistle. He's now allowed Gravenberg to restart, and we continue on this near side. Here is Elliot. On to Gramberg, back to Elliot once again. And the ball is collected by Gomez and sent out towards the far side and Connor Bradley. 62 on the clock. Talk sport live at Anfield. And they've gone from being 1-0 down for a, a huge portion of this game. Liverpool, after Ogbeni had given Luton the lead, to now finding themselves 2-1 behind. This is a different tester for these Luton players. All seem nice and calm and composed in that first half. All of a sudden, totally scrambled. Heads have gone. Discipline in terms of defensively. Here is Andros Townsend from distance. He's shot ricochets off Van Dijk and into Ogbeni's path, edge of the area. He just stumbled slightly and he lost the ball. And Osho has to cover the ground quickly to nab it in front of Gakpo. But he got contact on Gakpo and the referee has given a free kick as a result of that you're listening to talk sport liverpool lead by two goals to one against luton with now and don't forget with now you can stream all the sky sports action contract free with a now membership search now sports been a hectic start to the second half it's 62 minutes on the clock liverpool have come back from behind to lead by two goals to one and off comes Tahit chong and on comes jordan clark the latest of the trio of loop substitutions yeah I just wonder whether it might be a slight change in the in the system and just to leave Carlton Morris there up on his own get a few more bodies in midfield well Townsend's gone out towards the right hand side uh, it looks like Bell's gone proper left back now and uh, yeah 
it does look as if Doubt is pressing a little bit further forward on this left-hand side, so he'll try and get up support as Andros Townsend will. He's got the ball now on the halfway line after a mistake in midfield. It's given back by uh, Doughty to his goalkeeper, so we'll go off to half-time in the Bristol Street Motors Trophy semi-final at Valley Parade and talk sports Mark Wilson yeah Bradford nil Wickham nil here Sam Bradford having the best of the chances Tyler Smith inside 60 seconds should have done better but fired straight at the keeper Adore and Kavanagh both came close at the end of the half Wickham had one chance Dale Taylor's effort cleared off the line by Stubbs half time Bradford nil Wickham nil cheers Mark thank you very much back here at Anfield it's Liverpool 2 Luton 1 and Luton have given away another free kick on the edge of uh, their box wide on the Left as Liverpool look at it, Cody back, Gakpo was uh, this time holding and then being held by Mengi. <laughs> Again, Gakpo's got his arms wrapped round Mengi's back. So Men- Men- Mengi's sort of responding to that. The two falls to the floor and the free kick goes Gakpo's way. Yeah, you get some sometimes and you don't other times, but that's what you're trying to do. You're- were you a feeler? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah, a grappler. Of course. Did you win more than you lost? Yeah, did some of my best work. Size matters, doesn't it? (laughs) 65 minutes gone. Liverpool 2, Luton 1. You have to be listening really early in the first half to get that one. Uh, Here is Elliot to take the free kick, far side the left. 25 to go. It's going to be Harvey Elliott who swings this in from the far side. He actually takes a touch first of all, sends it to McAllister, then puts it into the box and then a little deflection meant it dribbled into the air. It wasn't a great delivery, but Barkley had to stretch to push it and prod it behind. And it's a way for yet another corner. They're up into the teens now. Yeah, the deflection actually helped to the delivery, made it more difficult for Luton to defend who basically haven't been out of their half, have they? In this, uh, in this second half well, I think the Luton fans at the Anfield Road end thought there was a half at this end of the ground all the action happening in front of the cop ball in towards the near post away by Barkley it's uh, still only 2-1 to Liverpool though and while that margin is slender you can uh, understand why there'll still be a bit of hope amongst the Hatters away to our left hand side rarely do they get thrashed Luton 9 of their 14 league defeats this season Dean have been by a one goal mar- margin which is testament to the way the coach reacts in games and how much their players put into each match yeah and I think again although Barkley's stolen it and he's won the ball on the halfway line and he's running towards the left edge of the area he's played it into Doughty who's inside the box who hesitated before he shot oh it's run through a loose six yard box and there was no one there to gobble it up and the little touch from Kelleher took it behind and it's away for a corner kick oh well that could have just gone in their favour Luton couldn't it because Doughty gets down the left hand side Barkley with a brilliant reverse pass into him and he just tries to feed this in towards the six yard line Quonsa goes diving in the deflection went over the top of Kelleher and just past the post oof it was actually, yeah, he didn't get a touch on it at all, Kelleher. It went over his glove. It could have gone anywhere. It didn't. It went out for a corner. And it will be taken over on that far side by Doughty. His delivery from set pieces is second to only James Ward-Prowse. Into the near post. And it was a... Well, don't say that was a commentator's curse, because that was dreadful. <laughs> it was. It's so it unlike him. He's so, he's so, so good at those deliveries from that side whipping them in Barkley scored a couple of goals from those deliveries 32 chances created from set pieces this season only James Ward-Prowse has created more here is Andrew Robertson for Connor Bradley and Connor Bradley I think Connor Bradley's being preserved for the cup final by the way oh definitely he's that good he is that good off he comes the Northern Irishman Learned very quickly that Liverpool fullbacks need to chip in going forward. Five assists already. Been progressive and helpful in that regard tonight. He was a Wembley winner last year with Bolton. And he wants to be a Wembley winner again on Sunday live on Talk Sport. Andrew Robertson on. He'll go to left back. Gomez will switch out to the right. I'll tell you what, Conor Bradley also steps into that midfield role like it's so easy for him like it's normal <laughs> yeah ball thrown in from the right hand side and it's now with Carlton Morris who shrugs off two defenders and tries to play it through towards Jordan Clark didn't reach him comes to Doughty his ball goes into the near post it takes a deflection off Gomez who blocked the effort to centre the ball and it goes out for a corner and uh, Alfie Doughty was pretty insistent that he was getting the same ball back there 
he fancies that one let's hope this is a better delivery than the last one should we give him the same big build up go on he is only second to James Ward-Prowse in cr chances created from dead ball situations. Alfie Doughty sends it in towards the centre of the six-yard box. He's headed away this time by Gakpo. Back in it goes towards Mengi, and then it's cleared away by Liverpool upfield. They defended that well. Yeah, Van Dijk again, absolutely magnificent. Brilliant first header. And then again, just bodied someone out of the way and then got the ball clear when it bounced down. It was always going to be a big night for him with the height from crosses and set plays that Luton would pose. Wataro Endo sends Luis Diaz away down the left-hand side. Two on the score to Liverpool, who were trailing for a long time in this game. For 40 minutes or so, 45 minutes or so in this match, before goals from Virgil van Dijk, their captain, and Cody Gakpo got them out of a hole. And now they're on course to go four points clear at the top of the table. Uh, elsewhere tonight, it's still Porto nil, Arsenal nil. It's half time over on Talksport 2. Napoli nil, Barcelona nil in the Champions League. And Bradford nil, Wickham Wanderers nil. If you want goals, you've got to be at Anfield, where it's only on Talksport. Gomez takes the ball down on this right hand side. High up the pitch he is at this moment in time in Luton territory. Back to halfway it goes. McAllister nudges it forward and then Gakpo just pushes the Osho out the way and there's space on the far side for Diaz if he can find him he couldn't and then it comes back to Elliot inside the box through the open 18 yard box he misses two red shirts and it's cleared away by Luton who were very lucky not to concede there because if that ball had been worked out to Diaz there was all sorts of trouble well there was I mean Gakpo had fouled <laughs> I think it was Osho yeah yeah here is uh, Gravenberg onto Gakpo again. His shot is deflected by Osho, who's still complaining at Andy Madley. And then Joe Gomez does well on the right hand side to stop Doughty's clearance from going the distance. It goes behind and down away. In fact, it's down by the corner plate for a throw in to Luton Town, who trail by two goals to one to Liverpool, who uh, are being watched here by Ronald Koeman, who's following us around. I feel as if he's my stalker this week. It's been everywhere. It's been at all the talk sport games. Uh, one by uh, Robertson, brilliantly onto Diaz, edge of the area. It's Diaz inside the box, the ball past the goalkeeper and smashes it home. Luis Diaz finally has his goal. Liverpool have three of them in this second half and they have all three points and they're showing why they are top of the Premier League. It's too much for them, Luton. This atmosphere, this Liverpool team. This Liverpool second half team are just so, so dominant this season. And again, if you gift mistakes to these top sides, unlike the Championship, unlike League One and Two, they punish you. They're top players. Diaz this time, really, really calm and composed. Robertson just passes it into him. It's a terrible, terrible ball out from Doughty. Robertson nips in. Diaz just takes his time, dribbles in towards the six yard box and then just flashes it past Kaminsky with his left foot. Easy, easy work for Diaz. Alfie Doughty's clearance was poor. Diaz's finish was decisive and he ran over to the corner flag, went up into the air, celebrated and then we got a picture of Dad in the crowd celebrating as well in his Liverpool jersey here comes Doughty at the other end though past the goalkeeper he's loose inside the box Clark tries to shoot it's blocked and cleared away anyway I don't think it would have counted because the offside flag has gone up on the far side but that was almost a quick response from Luton Town immediately Doughty on the attack down the left hand side and Clark got hold of the loose ball he couldn't convert it Liverpool swarmed back very quickly and constricted around Clark Doughty got a hit inside the box no suggestion of a penalty, but the offside flag was up anyway. Yeah, it, it was, was. Right from the kickoff. <laughs> it was brilliant from Barkley, by the way. Just drove forward and then played a great ball in behind for Doughty, who's so close to possibly being offside. And who was it that made a challenge? I think it was both Kwanzaa and Van Dijk. Both went sliding in with Clark to get something on it. Otherwise, that was in the back of the net. And Doughty looks hurt down on this near side. And we've got some treatment for him. 73 minutes played. Wow, this game has changed so quickly in Liverpool's favour. 15 minutes of madness. Van Dijk, Gakpo and Diaz responding to Ogbeni's opening goal. And Liverpool, who 
were behind, often are behind, have that propensity to come back and win matches. It's going to be 22 points from losing positions that they have picked up this season. And more importantly, they're going to be four points clear at the top of the table. And that means no matter what happens at the weekend, no one will catch them before they play Nottingham Forest a week on Saturday. And also, I think what it says is, you know, they've got so many injuries, yet still there's just something about this Liverpool team this season that you go... They're not going to fall away. They're not going anywhere. They're going to be there right till the very end. And I just thought it was interesting, you know, in the, the start of the second half, Liverpool were out really early compared to Luton. There's no doubt they came out still with the hot stinging breath on the back of their ears from Jurgen Klopp's probably absolutely dishing out some home truths here at Anfield for these Liverpool players. I suppose the question is, should they really need that? And the answer is, well, if it is required, it has to be given. Doubt is coming off here and to be replaced by Issa Kabore, who comes on to the pitch. Of Benny will switch wings. Kabore will go out to the right-hand side. On loan from Manchester City, Issa Kabore. was on loan at Marseille last year. And he comes on to replace Alfie Doughty. And that's uh, another change. Well, and, and, the night. and possibly another injury. That's something that I'm sure Rob Edwards definitely doesn't want to see, as you were talking about, you know, the threat that Doughty poses going forward and from set plays. They hope that that's not a, a serious injury. Absolutely not. And they've got uh, Manchester City at Kenilworth Road. And they caused Manchester City all sorts of problems down at Kenilworth Road earlier in the season. They'll be hoping to do so again in the FA Cup, live on TalkSport next Tuesday. By the way, the football we've got next week, this week, next week, the lot. I mean, it's unbelievable, really. You think tonight we've got Porto Arsenal on TalkSport 2. Tomorrow uh, night we've got the boys in the studio, Leanne uh, alongside uh, Hugh Wozencroft is there as well. Oh. Uh, here is Diaz inside the area. Right-footed shot towards the far corner, cut out by... Uh, Kaminsky makes a good save and it goes out towards the left and then Kabore gets it back towards Peli Rodakun Pantu and it's cleared away and then Friday night England women against Austria women is live on Talk Sport 2 Leanne Sanderson involved in that as well uh, with Joe Shannon commentating and then on Talk Sport we've got Leeds against Leicester which we can't wait for uh, Saturday more live football for you of course Hull West Brom and on uh, Talk Sport later in the evening Arsenal against Newcastle and that follows game day live and Aston Villa against Nottingham Forest Sunday the cup final Monday West Ham Brentford Tuesday three live games for you and Wednesday another two packed schedule I think here the corner comes in from the far side for Liverpool who lead by three goals to one in towards Quanza misses him comes out of the area towards Elliot Elliot gets it on his right foot shoots towards the far corner it's funneled away by Kaminsky he's made another load of saves tonight and then hooked clear comes back on the edge of the area for uh, McAllister doesn't hit it it's clipped back into the box to Gakpo and then and Van Dijk into the centre and it's smashed into the air by uh, Ted Mengi and up towards the halfway line and it's amazing though isn't it you know they look comfortable they look really good Luton in that first half, Barkley pulled back um, Harvey Elliott, gets a yellow card. Elliott's gone rolling around inside the uh, penalty area. He thinks he's hurt himself here, Harvey Elliott, after being pulled back. Just have a look at this for he, because he was pulled back, and then did he just slip as he went past him? I mean, he's claiming that he was really done there, Elliott, and he's still down. Barkley's got a yellow card for it. Yeah, I think as he's gone to hook the ball back, he's obviously then... His I think his right foot has just maybe collapsed slightly underneath Barkley's challenge. And again, if you tackle from behind now and you don't get a proper clean challenge, you're going to get a yellow card. Yeah, he uh, wanders back into the area. There's going to be another change here and Gravenberg coming off for Bobby Clark, son of Lee Clark, from the Newcastle and Sunderland player. And he enters the fray. The 19-year-old midfielder is making his seventh appearance of the season. Bobby Clark. Graven Burke is off. Back underway on TalkSport 2. Porto against Arsenal is nil-nil. Napoli nil, Barcelona nil. And Bradford against Wickham here. We'll keep you in touch with is still goalless. Here is the free kick from the right-hand side to be taken by 
Alexis McAllister, who right-footed, sends the ball into the six-yard box, punched away by Kaminsky. Clark tries to get on the end of it. Across comes Andros Townsend, just to funnel it away, but runs into traffic, and Harvey Elliott has it again. In fact, with Gakpo and uh, Diaz already on the score sheet tonight, it'll be a major plus for Jurgen Klopp if Harvey Elliott can also get on the score sheet in the absence of Nunez, Jota and Mo Salah. Uh, away by Cabore, up towards halfway, but McAllister has kept hold of it. And on to Van Dijk, who's on the edge of the area, almost as a centre forward now. Elliot takes over, right on the angle of the D. He then sends it back to Wataro Endo, who funnels it to the left. And in the wing position on the far side, Luis Diaz, with gloves on, swishes it back into the centre circle. Good, elegant football by Liverpool. They've kept possession really well, with 11 and a half minutes to go on Talk Sport tonight. It's now with Joe Gomez. On to Elliot, who looks up, plays it infield to Endo. No need to force the issue now, Dean, as well, for, for Liverpool. Managing the game out, not, that's not something that Liverpool really do. They, they, they're crash-bang wallop, aren't they? All energy all the way through. It's why they've scored so many goals in the second halves of football matches. But they, it feels like they've just broken the resolve of Luton. I talked about how comfortable and probably excited they were at half-time Luton. But you can't switch off. And sometimes there's levels in this game. And all of a sudden, they just crumbled under the relentless energy and pressure that Liverpool can produce in games in 10, 15, 20-minute spells, especially here at Anfield. And they're not the first team to crumble, and they won't be the last. A second half off for them when these two bring the entertainment. Luton have conceded 30 of the 47 goals they let in before tonight in the second half. Only Sheffield United have conceded more. They've also scored 14 goals in 15 minutes towards the end of matches. Only Liverpool with 22 goals and Arsenal have scored more in the Premier League in the final quarter of an hour of Premier League matches. The drama might not be over yet. A flick by Gakpo looking to release Diaz through the middle. But Ted Mengi is going to get there first and guide it back to Kaminsky. Yeah, that, that wasn't really a, a fair contest. Diaz is quick, by the way, but Mengi just made that look easy as that was flicked behind by Gakpo into Diaz's path. Currently Liverpool 3, Luton 1 on Talk Sport with now. And don't forget that with now, uh, you can watch all the Sky Sports action, stream the action contract free with now membership. Search now sports. I mean, Luton have to, of course, regroup after this game and plenty more games to come and plenty more games with the... Players oh, here is Gakpo being sent through by Endo towards the edge of the area and he's hit it really early and he's missed the target by some distance there, Cody Gakpo. He was... Uh, well, the ball was pinched in midfield by Wataro Endo and he just immediately turned and once that ball's given away by Andros Townsend then infield towards Barkley. Barkley has the pocket pinched and Wataro Endo wins it back. He pokes it forward into Gakpo and he was away. He saw Osho coming in in his wing mirrors, I think, and thought he'd better get rid of it quickly. And he did, and he smashed it, but it was well wide. Yeah, he was put off by Osho. Osho did well to come across. But again, with a player that's super composed, I think they still make sure that they test the goalkeeper at the very least, but he was just put off by Osho. Ogbeni, who's uh, trying to get beyond uh, Gomez, weaved in between two players and then tried to speed away. He felt he was tugged back there, and Joe Gomez is going to get a yellow card for breaking up a promising attack, and it's going to be... A set piece for Luton on this near side. And they have scored a lot of goals from set pieces. 32% of their goals have come from set pieces. Only Arsenal and Everton have scored more from set pieces this season. And yeah, listen, it, we said it in the first half when Doughty did it on the other side of the pitch. If you pull back a player who's got past you and they're on a promising attack, you get a yellow card. Yeah, it, it's in the law book. There'll be another fullback, though, that'll be so glad to. Uh for this night to end having played to against Ogbené honestly it's uh, <laughs> what a winger to play against Barkley into the centre Kelleher comes out commands his penalty area took out Gabore as well uh, T Townsend picks it up far side for Luton and they come back centrally he's had to deal with him twice because uh, it was on the other side in the first half <laughs> yes uh, here is uh, Bell, who's just about nudged that through to Townsend. He's found Carlton Morris, and then Barkley has spread it out towards Cabore, far side, steered it back into the box. Oh, he was stretching, uh, was Carlton Morris. And here's Townsend to hit it on the edge of the 18-yard box. He's a good deflection and goes over the top, and it's out for a corner. Yeah, well, they're giving it a go, aren't they, Luton? And they know if they get the ball wide, they'll just feed that in and flood the box as they did. 
It was run well in midfield. Townsend into Morris, into Barkley and wide for Kabore, who just played it in. It was just a fraction behind Colton Morris. And then when it came to the edge of the box, it took a wild deflection from Townsend. Shot. It's going to be Andros Townsend again into the edge of the six-yard box. It's headed away by commanding Virgil van Dijk. Back in by Amari Bell. Smacked into the air by Gomez. Well, I mean, I don't think that Bobby Clark could have too much of a complaint here because as he went up to challenge with Amari Bell, he went underneath Bell, who got up higher than him, and knocked him to the ground. Yeah. That's I think, going to be a free kick all day long. I think he's a little bit lucky he's not got hurt, actually. It's a bit naive from a young player that just thinks, I've got to try and win it, jumps in when he's not favourite, and actually probably a little bit lucky he doesn't get a proper whack. That was interesting because I was listening to Graham Souness actually talk about just that on Monday's show uh, with White and Jordan, which was always a, a great, it's always a great listen. They had Alan Pardew in, didn't they, on Monday? Here's Barkley getting away from the free kick and then shooting straight at Kelleher. And it's uh, down the throat of the Irishman and cleared out on this near side. Currently Liverpool 3, Luton 1. And for the latest odds, you can head to Labbrooks. The next player to score, Luis Diaz, 11-2. to two. Cody Gakpo, 9-2. to two. Ross Barkley, 16-1. to one. That's all thanks to Labbrooks. 18+. plus. BeGambleAware.org. There are just six minutes remaining. And Alexis McAllister has it centre field. Remember, Liverpool's next game is the Cup Final. The Carabao Cup Final against Chelsea live on Talk Sport from Wembley. We'll be building up on Wembley Way from 11 o'clock with Rory Jennings and Addy Oladipo. And then from 1 o'clock inside the stadium, Adrian I and Stuart Pearce will bring you all the flavour of Wembley from uh, the moment the teams arrived to the moment the trophy is lifted and beyond. Here is Bobby Clark, edge of the area, cutting in field, gets dispossessed by Jordan Clark. The ball bounces out towards this near touchline and it's recovered by Harvey Elliott of Liverpool and it goes from Gomez and then Luis Diaz looking to add to his tally tonight he's on 11 goals I mean we talk about Nunez and, and Salah and Jota and they've all done brilliantly to score the goals that they have but you know Gakpo's got 11 goals and, and Diaz has got 11 goals this season as well by the way they've got f- five players in double figures yeah yeah they have and also I think what's been really impressive is some of those goals have come from coming off the bench. You know, Klopp has made changes earlier in games, made a real difference. Yeah, that's why many people think that as the top scorers in the league, they've got the firepower that will keep them uh, in front of the other two. And the fixture list as well, I think, favours them over Manchester City. They've got Chelsea that game at Wembley, then they've got Southampton at home in the Cup, Forest away, Europa League, Manchester City at home. What a big game that is going to be. Everton, possibly not. That could be a quarter-final of the FA Cup. Brighton at home. An intense period. Harder to negotiate with all the absences, without doubt. But Manchester City's period is much tougher. Here is uh, Osho. Now towards the far side. And uh, then Kelleher will clear and get it out to Luis Diaz, who takes it down really well, despite the fact that he had a bit of attention. But I think it might have gone out of play and it goes out for a throw-in to Luton Town a couple of other changes about to take place and two young players about to come onto the field of play including Jaden Dans who, in just a second there is a free kick on the edge of the area here which is going to go Luton's way so they might just wait just a moment here Liverpool before making this change but the ball was picked up by uh, Barkley who just sort of nudged his way to the edge of the area I mean the touch on his back was so feather light that <laughs> how he fell over is unreal. Oh, it's ridiculous. I isn't mean, it? honestly, if I was on ice skates and I was going at that speed, I wouldn't have fallen over with that touch. No, no. I think he he got a tiny touch on his heel as well. If I was a but, dog but then, on lino, I wouldn't have fallen over. <laughs> that was that was last night's Stuart Pierceism. <laughs> the best one of the night as well. <laughs> Uh, I've got to say though the dribble b- before the non-foul yeah. was just magnificent the dive. from it Barkley was a dive. you can it say it's dive, okay yeah. it's fine it's a dive brilliant brilliant dribble from Barkley past about five players it would be interesting actually if he scores from this Barkley after having dived and there's a, a late flourish by Luton that will cause a bit of controversy well he's placed the ball down and it's going to be hit by Andros Townsend straight into the wall and that was a poor free kick 
Oh, Benny has a chance to make something of it on this near side, but then runs into a cul-de-sac. It's given to Amari Bell. He turns, plays it infield, and now Barkley just gets away from Wataro Endo, then does crack it into the Anfield road end, and it goes behind and away for a goal kick. So here's the changes, and the two changes are James McConnell, who comes on for Luis Diaz, and uh, it's going to be Jaden Dans who comes on for Alexis McAllister. Now, Jaden Dans is a striker. He's 18 years of age. He is making his debut. It might be a familiar name to you because he is the son of Neil Dans. He joined Liverpool at eight years of age. His dad actually was a schoolboy at Liverpool before going off and having a very good career elsewhere, including at Birmingham and further afield. And actually, his grandfather, Neil, was not only a champion skateboarder, but was also a singer on the UK's Eurovision entry in 1987. What a famous family. <laughs> Can you go back any further? I don't know what his great-granddad did, but impressively, um, it was, uh, you know, we haven't had many good years in Eurovision. That was a year we finished 13th with the Ricky's Only the Light. <laughs> no, I don't remember it. free kick given uh, for a foul on James McConnell over on the far side I don't have his parentage unfortunately <laughs> he's going to be not happy with you <laughs> yes the uh, what's that what's that website called the um, was it the anthology website was it the one An ancestry yeah the ancestry website yeah and you only get a free google search once you can't you can't do loads of different players <laughs> Uh, ball is on the right hand side <laughs> so with Quanza up towards uh, this near touch line where it's connected by Elliot and then it goes in field we're in the final minute of the game here and it is Liverpool 3 Luton Town 1 Quanza out to the far side I'm only giggling because the producer's giving me stick in my ear by the way uh, here is Robertson careering over halfway and there was almost a chance to play it into Dans and he would have been away he's got it now and he holds on to it brilliantly and he pokes it through the middle and Gakpo is free across comes the defender Elliot all three of Jurgen Klopp's replacement front line have scored now left footed from just inside the box he sends it high into the net to complete a comeback victory score four goals for Liverpool tonight and they go four points clear at the top of the Premier League. Harvey Elliott finishes it off. Good work by Dan's in the build-up to it. And Andrew Robertson too. And after what has been a dispiriting couple of days in terms of injuries, losing Nunez, Salah, Jota and others, the three replacement strikers, Elliott, Gakpo and Diaz, have all got on the score sheet. And Liverpool lead by four goals to one. Yeah, and it was led by Robertson. It was absolutely brilliant work. The ball was given away. Osho had it. Robertson didn't give it up. Went and closed down. Won the ball back. Dan's with a clever pass then into Gakpo, who thinks he's just about to score. And what a challenge, by the way, from Mengi. It's absolutely outstanding, this challenge, to take it off the feet of Gakpo. But there was Elliot, still believing, having not had a great game, to just curl it beautifully calmly into the top corner and it is worth pointing out again this Luton Town team do not get thrashed they don't get beaten by goals they don't it doesn't happen very often nine of their 14 defeats have been by one goal in fact nine of their last 12 league defeats have been by one goal Liverpool have scored four tonight the top scorers in the Premier League have extended that part of their advantage over everybody else as well this evening. Yeah, exactly. And with all their stars not in the lineup, others have stepped forward. It's been the story of the season so far for Liverpool. It's the second time they've scored a stoppage time goal against uh, Luton this season as well. And Luis Diaz got an equaliser down at the Kenny. A decision goes against uh, Liverpool and the free kick is given Luton's way just inside their own half. That is now the eighth stoppage time goal that they have scored this campaign. Wow. Well, there we are. Liverpool. With the soundtrack of Anfield just turned up a little bit. The cop leading the gleeful praise of Jurgen Klopp and his young team. And it is a young team tonight. Quans has started, Keller has started, Bradley started. You've got McAllister, who's not the oldest, let's be honest, he's only 25. 
Elliot Gakpo, Diaz. And off the bench, the likes of Dan's coming on, Bobby Clark, James McConnell, to help this team to a comprehensive victory over a team who can be a pain in the backside, by the way. I mean, you saw that with the first half performance. You know, Liverpool struggled. Luton were excellent in that first half. But then you think about... You talked about the young players, but then you think about the experience. You know, Van Dijk has been outstanding in the second half. It was his header that started things off. And then with the last goal, you got Robertson not giving up in the last minute of the game, going and closing down a player to win the ball. And that's where the the, uh, the fourth goal comes from. I like the look of that... Uh, Jaden Dans, I don't know about you, but he uh, I saw him score a goal, I think for the under-18s, not so long ago, a really terrific goal. And I thought, oh, I'll keep an eye on him. And uh, he looks to me like he could turn out to be a bit of a player for Liverpool in the future. I mean, he's still so very, very young. He's only 18 years of age. But uh, he's tall, he's big, he's strong, and he's certainly got, from what I've seen in the youth teams, he's got an eye for goal. What an experience to have this at Anfield when your team are winning. To be able to celebrate a goal with teammates when Elliot puts it in. Well, you'd know what it's like to play a part at that sort of age and be a part of a victorious team. It helps you, doesn't it? Oh, it does. It's absolutely massive. Every little detail as well. It'll even be then when the game finishes and you go into the dressing room and it's a winning dressing room and you see the experienced players and how they react to the management you take all of that in as an as a as an experience as a young player and then that drives you on to want more 94 minutes have been played there's eight minutes by the way of added time i mean god knows where they got eight minutes from but they have from somewhere uh offside flag is up on this near side and there's going to be a free kick to luton and Luton aren't going to be defined by what happens tonight. They've, they've got they've got big games to come themselves. They've got the, the FA Cup game against Manchester City, which again is going to be a difficult one for them. But Villa at home follow that. Palace away, Bournemouth away, Forest at home, and Tottenham away from home as well. And they'll hope to get a few of their injured souls back as well. Here's Andros Townsend running down the right hand side at rapid pace. He's got Colton Morris in the centre. He uh, cuts back, stops, goes back again, looks to take on Van Dyke. And then turns it back to uh, the right-hand side where it's crashed into the box by Roddick and Panzu. And it's cleared away by Liverpool rather easily and McConnell will lead the attack. He sends the ball out towards the right-hand side. The emergence of this young, these youngsters has helped Liverpool as well this season. I know that the, the reconstruction of the midfield has been a big part of what they've done. And you know some of those that they bought in last year have started to settle a little bit better as well. But... The youngsters that have emerged, Bradley being one of those, Bobby Clark being able to come in and play seven games in the season. You know, that's those those players coming through the ranks are helpful. <laughs> Good players is what they are. Yeah. You know, Bradley, you, you, you sort of think Liverpool may have been looking for a right back. Not anymore. No way. Here's the cross into the box, which takes a deflection, goes out for a corner, and Luton have won a corner in the 96th minute of the game. Uh, Napoli nil, Barcelona won. Robert Lewandowski with the goal after an hour. Uh, still no goals in the Arsenal game on TalkSport 2 or in the Bradford Wickham semi-final of the Bristol Street Motors trophy. Here's the corner, far side. Mark your card here because Andros Townsend is about to deliver a set piece in towards the near post. Left-footed right into the six-yard box Mengi goes towards it it's a good fingertip punch from uh, Kelleher he just sort of prodded at it with his top of his gloves and it goes out on this near side back it goes into Barkley Barkley down the right trying to twist out of a tight position Endo by the way he's a little silent assassin Endo no one hardly mentions him because he sits at the base of that midfield he doesn't get any attention no flash bulbs go off every time he picks up the ball but he's a little destroyer isn't he at the base of the midfield and he can also pick a pass yeah he's the type of player that most of these top sides need isn't it the player that doesn't want the attention that's happy just to do the work for others then to, to shine bright and Endo is one of those players Kelleher to clear high into the evening sky 97 minutes and 3 seconds have been played at Anfield few empty seats now as people have gone to 
get their uh, early rides back home from Anfield. The cop is still absolutely packed, though, away to our right-hand side. Belton out. You'll never walk alone just a moment ago. They know that they, they've got a chance. They, they really have a chance of uh, winning the Premier League this year. And uh, I think... I think they've got a big chance of doing something else on Sunday as well because they will believe that whatever they put out, they can challenge Chelsea. They seem to have the sign over Chelsea at the moment. They thrashed them here not so long ago by four goals to one. That's their next adventure, a trip down to Wembley. Oh, Kaminsky has spooned the clearance away. And eventually picked up by Amari Bell and he'll drag it out on this near side goes centrally and then push it wide towards the far side and Caboro will bring it to halfway there's the full time whistle greeted with glee one or two <laughs> Liverpool players have gone to ground and just collapsed because the effort and energy they had to expend to get past Luton was huge but when they did they powered past them and despite their injuries and ailments Liverpool do go four points clear of Manchester City to ensure whatever happens over the weekend, by the time they have finished their latest cup final duel with Chelsea, they will still be top of the Premier League. Liverpool don't lose at Anfield, so it was always a forlorn task for Luton, but their fight will be with those around them in the Premier League, and it won't be long before they renew those hostilities. They got a bright start, of Benny put them in front, but their lead could not be held on to because in the absence of the big hitters, Nunez, Jota and Salah, Gakpo, Diaz and Elliot all got on the score sheet after Van Dijk had levelled things up, and it means that Liverpool have beaten Luton by four goals to one. As Jurgen Klopp and Rob Edwards walk onto the turf together, uh, arms round each other, having a long chat in the middle of the pitch. There's a lot of mutual respect there. There was before the game, if you uh, heard them in the press conference, but uh, it is Jurgen Klopp who's got the three points after a scare in the first half. And take a look at that home record for Liverpool this season. 1-11, drawn two, lost none. Sensational. It's one of the big reasons why they are top of the Premier League table. Four points now ahead of Manchester City, five ahead of Arsenal, having played a game more than both of those two. But Liverpool have lost only two of their 26 so far. City have lost three, Arsenal four. And now Liverpool, after tonight's 4-1 victory, have the best goal difference of the three. And that could be vital come the end of the season. We talked in depth about that last night on the show. Plus 38, Arsenal plus 36 and City plus 32. As the Liverpool players applaud the cop, who was slightly disgruntled at uh, half-time. There's no booing or anything like that but uh, they were well happy by full time over to our left the Luton players have gone over to their fans to uh, appreciate them and rightly so as well and Dean Ashton first things first we'll talk about Liverpool in a second oh here's Klopp he goes skipping over three punches and then turns right around I have to say that uh, oh he's done it to the Kenny Dalglish stands as well and they've appreciated that too and he, now he comes jogging towards us. Oh, the fans want one more. There you go. He's orchestrating the crowd. Heaven knows what they're going to do if they finally lose a Premier League game here this season. And one more. I think they quite like Jurgen Klopp. Is he doing an Arsenal, though? Dean Ashton over-celebrating, do you think? <laughs> It's only Luton. <laughs> They're in the bottom three. <laughs> I'm only joking. Uh, I'm only joking. Uh, first of all, Luton, they were very, very competitive in the game, and we must applaud that. I'm sick of teams rolling over Burnley 5 0 at home to Arsenal, West Ham 6 0 at home to Arsenal. Pathetic. Brentford had a game plan. Yeah, they lost to City. Luton were competitive tonight. And when I mean competitive, yeah, they've got beaten by four goals to one they had 12 efforts on goal here at Anfield they led at half time they had nearly 40% possession they had three efforts on target those numbers are put in the shadow by the Liverpool numbers but what it proves Dean is that Luton were competitive 
Yes, they were. I mean, that first half, I thought they were excellent. They were brave in the way that they played. They caused Liverpool problems. They obviously took the lead and silenced Anfield, which is rarely done. But to win and get a result here, you have to have so much more. You have to handle that big period that Liverpool give everybody where the crowd is up. You've got to try and hold yourselves together. And they properly crumbled for that 10 minutes, 10 or, 10 or 15 minutes. They looked lost. And that's fair enough. And, and that's not a criticism, really, because it happens to so many teams. I'm talking about some of the best teams in history have come here and crumbled for 10, 15, 20 minutes. And, and Luton did the same, and they just didn't look like they could handle that pressure. And then they've shown character again, I think, to carry on all the way to the end even though they've conceded and they know they're going to lose the game. They continued to drive forwards. I think that says a lot about the character of the side. And they've got some big, big games still to come. You're not defined by trips to Anfield, that's for sure. Now, well, let's talk about uh, Liverpool and the comeback when they were 1-0 down at half-time. Two goals, two minutes. A Van Dijk header from a ball in from the right. A Gakpo header from a ball in from the right. It's not difficult to spot where the weaknesses were for Luton. Yeah, I mean, look... Doughty's been excellent. There's no doubt about it. But um, he no struggled. About it. There's no doubty about it. And and he struggled because he. I think his first thought is to get forwards. I think that's that's what he's become this season for Luton. Is that player that drives forward from the left hand side. But sometimes against a team such as Liverpool, when you know you're under severe pressure, you have to sit in deep. You have to defend properly. And it was too easy for Liverpool to get down that side. But also, it's not just him. They switched off from two set plays. That's what will really hurt Rob Edwards is the set plays against a team like Liverpool. Fair enough if they carve you open. But two set plays where you've switched off. That's kind of unforgivable. When you, They will have done so much work on that as well during the week. So he'll be disappointed at that. Uh, Luis Diaz... Well, one of them had to go in. He had so many chances, uh, Luis Diaz, that one of them eventually had to go in, and it did, 71, um, and it gave Kaminsky no chance. It was just a, a terrific finish. Yeah, Luton looked tired. Kaminsky looked tired. It was so easy for Diaz. He just made absolutely sure with the finish. Take away the missed opportunities, which he was poor tonight, let's be honest. But I thought his performance was excellent. His energy, his intensity that willingness to run off the ball which I don't see enough players do anymore especially forwards it's too easy just to come to the ball and try and receive short passes no actually it takes a lot to run constantly in behind test the defence I thought Diaz did that that was his role tonight I think with with uh, Elliot on the other side you know coming in a little deeper and Gakbo coming deeper it was his job to do the unselfish running in behind I thought he was excellent actually a very quick one on uh, Harvey Elliott and as Sam pointed out it's the three that have come in for Jota, Nunez and Salah. They've all scored. That has to be... The, I mean, Jurgen Klopp must be absolutely bursting with happiness, with pride that they've all got on the score sheet. Yeah, and especially Elliot at the end. You know, he's a young player. He's 20 years old. It's a big, big ask for any young player to handle the pressure of playing for, for Liverpool. And he didn't give up. Even at one point, the ball came to the edge of the box and he massively had the handbrake on. He went for a side foot finish. He had no... Um, energy on it at all and I thought you can tell it's getting to you a bit the fact that you've missed a few chances and you can hear the groans and the pressure's there but he continued to to get involved in the game he didn't shy away and then when the chance came he took his goal brilliantly because he's a great player and he's going to have nights like this where it maybe doesn't go but you've got to keep going when you play for these top sides and, and he got his reward uh, and Liverpool got their reward 4-1 winners over Luton Town the four points clear at the top of the Premier League table by the way it's still Porto nil, Arsenal nil. we'll be there very shortly but it's time now for us to pick our man of the match with Enterprise Rent-A-Car man of the match on TalkSport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car whatever the mission home or away Enterprise helps over 120,000 people every day I'm intrigued by this Dean Ashton who's getting your man of the match do you know what he is the ultimate Rolls Royce of a centre back. He is, an, and you watch him and you think, you don't have to. It's so annoying. You don't have to get out of second gear. It's that easy for you most of the time. And there was just a moment on the far side where Gomez had obviously was having a tough time and Van Dyke stepped across. Ogbeni tried to run him and he just put the afterburners on himself, just shrugged him aside, played it back to his goalkeeper. And I thought, 
that's brilliant. That's just a little sign to say, I'm going to help you out, my fullback. I'm going to show you, Ogbeni, that you can't just run our defence. Then he goes up the other end and scores the header to start things off. And then there was there was a few moments, even towards the end, you know, where he's winning the headers from, from Luton set plays. I just thought it was a magnificent performance from Virgil van Dijk. And, and I hate giving it to centre-backs. Now, it actually is a little bit of a compliment to Luton because he had work to do at the back as well. He had uh, stuff to deal with, and you're right um, about uh, coming across and helping out Gomez. And I don't think it was the only time that he did that. They needed a leader. He certainly was that tonight with so many players out uh, for Liverpool this evening. They come from behind to win 4-1, and that was our man of the match, Virgil van Dijk, from tonight's game with Enterprise Rent-A-Car.